All right, everybody, welcome back. It's a spectacular time here at Combo Breaker 2024, and it's DNF Duel Top 8 action. I'm Zero alongside Shay. How you doing, man? It's I'm good to be back. I'm doing great, yeah. This is just absolute pandemonium in this bracket right now, because as you know, DNF is a game where literally anything could happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, the explosivity of this game is the talk of the town, the explosivity of this top eight bracket, which we have right here for you to take a look at with plenty of competitors out here, some with familiar names, right? Lufal at the top with Monocat, Crazy Fingers and Goldeneye for winner's side here. And then for our losers section, we have Aku, a dynasty, Aku, a dynasty, excuse me, and Riazo. I got Samar Jack stuck in the head with that name. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Danny Phantom PR up against Crank Gang God to round out that loser's side here. So, which actually we've got a couple of those by the looks of it with some advancements. So. Yeah, for sure. Like the and um, I mean, if you were watching up until now, you've noticed there's a lot of vanguards in the bracket, right? Yeah. But uh, it seems as though some of them have been filtered out as they have run into each other. A lot of uh, repeat characters as well in terms of like Inquisitor, which is not something you get. Yeah. It's become more and more popular in this patch in particular. Yeah, Inquisitor is certainly one of those characters that has seen a rise in this current version of the game. Uh, we do have that Ranger, that Lone Ranger in Goldeneye <laughs> out here, so yeah. we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, plenty of Vanguard, which is surprising. We do have uh, a couple Monks, I believe, hanging out here in the works. I, I remember watching that for the top 16. You know, one of the only new characters to really make that regular appearance, because honestly, which was a surprise, no no breaker mm. at all in this bracket. I mean, it is tough because playing a, playing a character that isn't your own character in this game takes a lot of dedication because there's really so much, like, like the combos are not necessarily the hardest thing ever, but then right. you have to be so locked that you can't miss anything in this game because yeah. it's basically one opening a lot of times. And we got the <laughs> four of a kind, you know, Ooh. up there right now. What, does that spell doom for your opponent there? Four cards. Are we doing a magic trick right now? Ooh, okay. Okay. All right, I'm locked in. We have four cards. Four cards. All, all, right. all aces are available. The oh. shuffle. Pick a card, any card. All right. Here we go. The mind games. The mind games start. The mind games start before you even pick your character. All right. What's the card here? It's, uh, oh, Ace he's of looking at the screen. Are you kidding me, cheater? Okay. Ace of hearts. Two jokers. Okay. What is? What are we doing? I'm not sure. What? But I, I think what? I got God. <laughs> what what was that? No, here's what's gonna happen. Okay. He's gonna finish the set and be like, your card was the uh, Ace of Hearts. <laughs> but he looked at the screen! <laughs> no, but he didn't see it, is what okay. I'm saying. Okay, yeah, maybe. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he cheated. Okay, well either way, we're gonna have Vanguard versus Inquisitor here. Now Vanguard is a character very common these days because he's very, very solid. Yes. Um, has really long block strings. Um, and you know, just using those block strings, while he doesn't necessarily have like a really, really spectacular mix-up, just gets guard breaks, you know? So then yeah. he guard breaks you and kills you that way. Inquisitor on the hand, extremely fast character, has a um, command movement and can put you in blocks in for 600 years. So we'll see uh, <laughs> which which uh, play style ends up working out in this particular one. But you know, oftentimes Inquisitor, she has so much safe pressure these days. Um, that could be the way that she kind of just rushes down the Vanguard player, but Vanguard player can also just work away to keep the Inquisitor out. Yeah, we also had that uh, quick little uppercut from Inquisitor there to get that little step attack against Vanguard if you end up being just slightly out of reach. Uh, but that is to say, if Vanguard does get those gaps opportunities through the sequences that we do keep pulling the opponent back for you know, that guard break opportunity there. And right off, right off the bat, showing off the new defensive mechanic and that little spirit, what you can do with that is negate pushback or vacuums as well, right? And so by doing that, you can mess up the math of your opponent and using the DP to get out of that pressure there. Put the fire on them. Spending time to recover that scratch damage here. Gets up for Monocat. Already dwindling away at the scratch damage for Lufal. And the guard gauge. That's also going to be a significant problem here in just a moment. Unless... Ooh. Yeah, gets out of it. Spends that health bar. Ooh. And then uses that to cancel that recovery and punish Money Cat for up to 50% of the health right here. Yes, indeed. And since we are on the 50% cube, the blue cube, we're already awakened here. But so is Monocat. Ooh. Scary dodge roll there. Gets counter hit. This should be it. Yeah, frame traps are a little scary here against a character like Vanguard. We've seen this super many a time here as Lufal certainly showing off right now for the cam. Yeah, I mean, you got all day, right? Might as well <laughs> get your yoga poses in there. Gotta hope the six W. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident there. Nice. That start of the round there with that light attack. Does Lufal gets a big hit there, but that ender. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, gets hit by the fire. And it's now in exhaustion, so when you're in exhaustion, you can't use any of your special moves. Right. Takes advantage of that, does want a cat. 
to get another combo here and, you know, get that moistening going, you know? Yeah, I'm glad we backed off on that route there. We looked a little bit too high to continue the combo against Lufal. Do you want to tech out for a punch opportunity? So Monica gonna get that next reset into the oils. Whoa, there we go. Burn There's alive. the big wheel. We're blocking. We're blocking. We're baiting. We're baiting guard cancel. Serving as much Ooh. as we can here. Oil up. Final touch scenario. Uh, we stay close. Yeah, look. Yeah. Five B right there from Inquisitor for the finish. Yeah, it looked like they tried to go for some armor or something. Did not work out. Tries to go for start of the round DP. Didn't work. Looked like. Ooh, missed that. Swing. Gets the hit conversion. Can't pick this up now. Using that white health to cancel one of your moves. Ending all the recovery and getting some damage and meter. Indeed. Jump in. Okay. Nice roll through here for Monocat to get the side swap. Yeah, Punish opportunity on bringing it down from above. Pinwheel, number two. Put all that chip that was building up on scratch damage. Also taking Ooh, away just, from the guard gauge. Just spent it off. And this could be it, though, because of that. Yeah, that's the thing. It's risky. You get all your health back. Or, sorry, you can give away all your health, you get tons of meter, and end your recovery. But I could literally kill you, too, just like you see right there. Yes. Right, quick adjustment of the headset here. First game going to Inquisitor. So with that, what adjustment are we going to make? We're going to look right into the camera, and then we're going to blink. Oh, I don't think that's a good sign. You're not supposed to blink. What oh. is this? The Blink. mean muggin. <laughs> <laughs> is everyone okay? No, they're We're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're feeling. No, you know what? They're having fun. That's, all, that's what this game's all about. Monocat's in complete control right now with this Inquisitor play. Already had a couple, you know, pinwheel lockdowns. Already have our opponent on fire. Lufa looking a bit in trouble right now since we're all oiled up. Yep. And, you know, spending that as well as catching them on fire with that spot debuff as well. Throw there. Throws don't do a lot of damage, but they're really quick in the add up pretty quick, as you can see right there. Yep. Ooh, okay. Nice. Just lets it rip, but doesn't convert. Should have converted that probably to get a combo. But ends up spending the health here instead. Doubles up on the damage pretty much. Close, nice IS here. Keep things close and personal with Luffy. Yeah, by using that you prevent the vacuum, so you keep you keep Vanguard at the, a good range with that, and with that a good challenge. You get some good damage here. Probably will kill, honestly. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah. You definitely had to make that spend right there to uh, at least get a challenge just the way that Lufal is kind of keep things locked down. You could IS forever, but at some point you got to make a move to open up your opponent to stop that offense. Otherwise, it's just going to go to a guard break scenario. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. You know, again, like, just these like small minor new things make a huge difference. Just one or two hits in this game could be the entire thing at the end of the day. So Money Cat going to get a lot of meter back here. And then probably end with a pinwheel. Or not. In terms of water. It gets tagged for it, though. <laughs> I thought that might have been the better option, but here we go. Lufal gets a combo here. Is that very efficient is Vanguard. Very one of the most efficient characters, Ooh. but drops the combo. Does not get to punish, though. Just a weird ender from that situation. This is some of that pandemonium that you can see in DNF duel. Anything could happen. A drop combo could lead to a massive reset. Just like that, Lufo is in control of this round so far. Yeah, big spend on the IS. Almost Whoa. no health available. <laughs> we float back down for the kill, and the entirety of this top eight will continue on. Here we go. Next to the third round. Rushing down his money cat here. Yeah. Bring it back down again. Holy water, lift off. Since we sparked the fire, it's gonna burn for damage over time a bit. Just like that, you know, it adds up so quickly, right? You see that health just going down little by little. Yeah, playing this set play with the Inquisitor is certainly ideal. We see it a lot across many Inquisitor players when they go for that oil setup. That's yeah. the threat if the opponent's worried about being scooped or even just Oh, us. nice. Opened up while they're on fire here, but Lufo takes a chance. <laughs> They almost converted that. That almost worked. Had that big conversion right there, but didn't didn't follow it up properly. I'm just gonna wait for their meter now. It looks like not a bad idea if you are Vanguard. Just build up the 200 meter so you can get a big block shin going. If you get a little bit of a Yo. fist bump there. The fist bump for both of them. Whoa, for that meter and to this build. could be it with 200 meter. Could definitely kill you. I don't know at this point now. Like, was it worth it? Because it might be the turnaround here. Whoa. Awakening. Does yeah. yeah, going full Sam show like that isn't always the best, right? Because if you got meter advantage, you should press that advantage sometimes. But here we go. But once again, both players having so much fun here out here in top eight. Yeah. I mean, bottom cat allowing that meter is such a strange choice when you do have the wheel to show up for you. You also have your. Uh, we haven't seen the spin cycle show up for Inquisitor. The jumping uh, special there. Oh yeah, that's true. Right back yeah. Down. 
that does help close the gap. I guess a character like Vanguard, um, or, excuse me, yeah, Vanguard, probably not as likely because of the fact that uh, that those spear normals do reach pretty high, kind of interrupt those things. All right, nice. Yeah, convert that. Doesn't like what they saw. A little pressure here. Once again, backs off with the fire, catches the jump out, looks like. Dash up now. Okay, more water and fire, DOT. He's getting a pretty close to kill, but unless that happens. With that 200 meter, we've seen what happens with 200 meter. Good roll. Oh, what a jump move right there. Bates out that throw, big, huge damage. Gonna get pretty close to killing, honestly, with the super here. Yeah, absolutely. But it does do reduced damage because of the type of cube you have, but I think it's gonna be enough, honestly. Yeah, we shall see. It should be enough because we're certainly under the uh, the point of no return here. But yeah, there it we was go. enough. Just like that one hit, 200 meter. You never, especially a character like Inquisitor, who has just in general limited health, right? So. Right. To round two of game number three. Okay, a big start for Lufu here. Okay, whoa, dodge it looks like. Gets the throw. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting little scenario right there. Good pick up here. Whoa! <laughs> Doesn't have me to convert, but just take the knockdown. Dodge is through it. There it is. That spin cycle able to get this extension opportunity here for Bonacat to hold the corner. Does have holy water applied to get the burn over time. There's that pinwheel. Can you block through this? Well, he's going to put the fire on and get another block string. Since Bonacat decided to stand full screen away from Lufal, it's fine to just hold on to that. You don't need to spend resources to IS. Uh, you don't need to roll. You just, you're just you looking for that high low mix potential from Bonacat. Ah, that throw's going to kill. Oh, yeah, 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 that one certainly will. But yeah, with the massive life lead like that, there's not much of a reason to even close the gap against stuff. Uh, exactly. I uh, just saw it. Monica just baiting the whole time, right? Just saw, are you going to go again? No? All right, I'm going to kill. I'll come back. I'll come back later when you do. <laughs> right. Nice. Okay. Just about a 50% health bar here as we get this throw. Yeah, that dot, that dot damage is so huge. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> DP through it. And because of that buff, gets an extension of it too. Yeah, very good. DP through DP is also a tool, right? If you time it just early enough, it gets an inv uh, invincibility. Yeah, and closes it out there with that DP punish, which is not something you expect to say, you get a 50% off DP. But that specific situation, because you do have that debuff on the opponent, that causes that situation to happen. <laughs> Uh-oh, mind games? More mind games? Is it not okay that <laughs> for Lufal? <laughs> oh, are we going to see Troubleshooter? No Ooh. way. Ooh! Ooh, I think this, I like this matchup. Understand, understand that uh, Troubleshooter is not necessarily at the top of the picks or roster in terms of strength, but Troubleshooter has ways to make things very difficult here for Lufu, but I guess no, we're, we're going to go back to it. Well, I guess Troubleshooter, maybe they ask, like, is it, did you guys play Troubleshooter against you? And they're like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you should go back to Vanguard. <laughs> just pick Vanguard. Yeah, just pick Vanguard. Maybe that's the trick. You're, the mind game, right? Yeah, you just exactly. tell your opponent to not pick the character you're weakest against. Exactly. All right. So they're going to go back into it. Potential last game here for these two. So once again, with the 50% cube, I don't think we really got to talk about it too much, but you know, 50% cube is something that was added in this version. Um, it basically has, you get a different set of buffs. They're not quite as strong as the 30% right. cubes, but you know, it gets a little bit more versatility for a lot of characters who um, can just die when they have 30% instead. So, Ooh. okay, good start here for Luke. All right, gets a knockdown here. That block stream we were talking about. Using Indomitable Spirit to get that rollout. Nice. Some I uh, the blocks there, but Ooh. mostly just the, uh, the pushback here. Yeah, this should be enough. Get oh, no! Drop it! Drop it. Able to dodge that fire carpet. We have no help for our name on the side of Monocat, so... But if, yeah, but if you're not dead, that means you can win. Especially in this game, where 50% might as well be 0%. <laughs> Oh, wheel number mercy, one. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna do so much chip here that you can probably set up another wheel and then make get in the throw range to be killed. <laughs> wow, very unfortunate there. Yeah, I like. I saw what they were going for right there, right? But sniffed it out. Did Lufal respond with the DP? Yeah, it was a very uh, well thought out uh, plan of capture there. Here we go. Monica starting off strong this round with a long combo into the. Splash of water. Okay. <laughs> Swing. Pull it right back in. 
Not using IS there and good guard cancel. Maintain that momentum with that extra meter converts. Mm -hmm. the corner. Whoa, that was a nice dodge, but at what cost as Lufal carries Monica at to the corner? Okay. Ooh, this is an air combo under a lot, and does it again out of frustration maybe because they just yeah. took another hit after going for that. It's going to be a big call for Monica, and they should kill. Put you out on the barbecue patio. Goodness gracious. Whole barbecue patio? Man, I want some barbecue. <laughs> Heck, yeah. maybe even the fighting game special. Let's go to uh, Korean barbecue and we'll do yeah. that. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Again, yeah, that's a really good start that Lufo had right there. And again, that's probably how the first time started. It's just a strong light poke. Uh, I was facing Monica and Wizards, probably opener, which probably been running like low, low attack. Right? Right. He's an IS, but gets caught here. Not enough meter to kill, most likely. Yeah. Monica will have at least another chance. Spends a lot of it to get it with him. Throw ish range for first up, but doesn't punish! Yeah, wasn't looking for that option, clearly. It was a shoulder check, nice roll, but unfortunately not opening up your turn. Guard now. cancel, disrespected the guard cancel. I think they might have tried to do like an armor hit, but they didn't have any meter. Mm. Has to block all this. And that guard gauge is cranking right now. Gets hit by something. I couldn't even see what happened, and that should be it. No, no more. <laughs> I think we got this. It said no. Maybe they're alive, you know, I never know. Oh, they are alive! Yo, see? Monocat knew so yes. you have a moment of life here. Just a scratch. And yeah. a, again, like we saw in the previous game, Monocat is totally comfortable just hanging out full screen, not running in, willing to wait oh, out the timer. No, he missed the confirm! Oh, that's not good. Can't convert anymore. <laughs> yeah, don't want to lose the lead with 33 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, these seconds feel like endless. Dodges new. Another flame carpet just keeping away here. Has to be so careful. It's the Oh, jeez, I thought too you was gonna hit there. Okay, that chip damage could allow us to convert from convert. You gotta be careful here. Fire carpet is there. Oh my goodness, 14 seconds left. Another holy file. One more with 10 seconds. Oh, it just puts out a wheel. Oh, and then, yeah, you just gotta leave it there, but 50 Ooh. seconds left on the clock. This chip is gonna put them at equal health. I think actually his loophole has another hit. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I think actually, I think Lufal had two pixels of health and had them maybe gone for that zero chip situation right there. They might have been able to win, but often for a throw, they both throw, and somehow they both whip. And with that, Monocat is going to move on to winners. Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things where you, yeah, yeah, you have all the time in the world to really kind of back off and give your opponent time, but that explosivity might come to you to really kind of try to catch up in that game. And that's such a high risk with those final two pixels. The, I mean, honestly, not dying to chip deaths in, in this game, so you can certainly block for as long as you want to. It's about everything else where you can get opened up, whether it's the throw, high-low mix. It really depends on the character you're up against. And Inquisitor really held her own uh, in this set in particular. Yeah, absolutely. Using a lot of, like, just... I mean, Inquisitor is one of the quickest characters in the game, right? And mm. so we saw how, like, that quickness can just land a lot of those conversions, put you in those insanely long block strings, right? Where it's just like, yeah. you know, it's my turn until I say it's not my turn anymore, <laughs> right? So then just using that kind of, to, like, buy your time, think about what you've been doing in this, like, you know, what are you going to have for lunch tomorrow? And then, you know, finish it up with a throw or something like that, right? right? absolutely. Well, up next we will have our uh, next winner's semis match on stream here. It'll be Crazy Fingers versus Goldeneye. Golden Eye showing up with that Ranger play. Yeah, the last Ranger in the tournament, as far as I know right <laughs> yeah. now. And um, yeah, I mean, Ranger is a very strong character in this game, has a lot of really awesome options in terms of block strings, in terms of, uh, you know, the ability to kind of move around the screen. Their, oh, uh, their uh, wake up game is also pretty strong as well, right? But against that is Monk, a very, very powerful <laughs> character with a lot of movement abilities, insane mix against tall characters like Ranger. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be one heck of a matchup, I'd say. Yeah, Monk's routes are just so oppressive against the opponent. A lot of uh, safe strings to go for, even you're, you're guessing overhead or low with Monk on the uh, B button series. So that can kind of be scary to deal with. But if you don't allow Monk to get in, then you're going to be all the better. Goldeneye has a tendency to kind of keep the opponent away, play more than, as you should as a Ranger, but then also willing, to, able to, uh, willing and able to cross up against an opponent that feels comfortable against the time. Yeah, taking the air did crazy fingers. So. Yeah, the dive bunch is so good. Use this conversion to keep it safe. Oh, wow. Oh, that hit's so weird, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, here's a big combo for Goldeneye. Flip, nice little cross under. Make sure we can hold uh, West East side of the screen. Okay, slips up that grenade, and with that, the low hit. Grenade goes off, allowing the extension of the combo here. Really gonna spend that much meter here for a couple genocide. Ooh, yeah, got caught again. With that very clean eye round from Goldeneye. But I don't know if that was supposed to be the end there. Mm -mm. Dodges out. Whoa! He <laughs> uses that armor move. Here we go. Here comes his block. Just gets hit. But this is that conversion. You can see that desperation kind of get on Crazy Finger's eyes because yeah. once we're kind of out, just go, you know, all pedal to the metal for that round here before we uh, you know, go down without a fight. Yeah. I mean, again, gets in. Big hit here for Crazy Fingers. Okay. It's the low hit. Yeah, that's the thing. That instant overhead is just so scary that a random low would just end up killing you. Big combo here. This might be it, honestly. Reset there. And the instant overhead does do the reversal. Flip, same side. Block that stereo here. Trade. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is going to do a lot of damage. Or not. Let's put the setup here. Maybe go for a guard break. Yeah. Could do so much guard damage, gets a guard crush, and all that chip adds up to for a kill. That was insane because I think I saw a little bit of the uh, MP gauge build up there. Yeah. Uh, and Crazy Fingers had spent it on something, but it got shut down by Golden Eye. That projectile is so powerful. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, I can understand it makes sense that he didn't go for a convert, just wanted to build a full minute just to get lots of more of those and just get that guard crush. Ooh, okay. Guard cancel there. It's like Watson. <laughs> Is that going to be? Yeah, of course, we go for the Scott Genocide Grenade Toss in this corner position, slide into the DM. Okay. Nice. Guard cancel back into the corner. The switch is out. Yeah, that was very bizarre interaction right there because we pulled right out of the corner, put ourselves back in, at least push the opponent out. Yeah. Crazy thing is not seeing a lot of meter, but jumps right into that. Oh, this will be I, no, I dub you wrong game. <laughs> this will be an awakening for sure. Here we go. Yeah. This should close it out. Flashy way to end it for sure. Yeah. Oh, no! One pixel again! Wow. Maybe that, like, a uh, little bit of. Ah, there, we go, yeah. there we go, there we go. That's why you just keep spamming Gunhawk. Like, I missed? All right, you're gonna have to block some of this eventually. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, you have, there's no better person to take a single pixel off your opponent than Ranger. Mm -hmm. A slide. Oh, goes for the conversion. Okay. Gonna probably end up back in the corner with a grenade slide to beat that out. And again, I think that's one of the things that Crazy Fingers may be going for a specific one of those uh, movement options there, but they don't really beat the run, like low moves like that. So. Grenade keep up on us here in this corner position. Yeah, a little bit. Ah, again with the low, oh, just just the straight up low and putting so much work right there, right? We just start blasting toes. That's what it is. Yeah. Goodbye. Boy. That's the thing, cause like you know, we know that Monk has really good options from that movement tool, right? But right. again, you get a little bit too antsy, just like a, a low in a block sheet ends up paying off so much for Goldeneye going up 2-0. Okay, guard cancel. Using like really we made a really liberal on guard cancel as yeah. well. <laughs> again, counter hit slide. Two M's there. We break in to lift off. It's got genocide. Keep you in position with the grenade after. Nice! But Whoa. again, that interaction is so weird that like he's not been able to convert off it. Yep. Okay. Nice. Corner carry. Two Lariats. Alright. Ah, there it is. That's that instant overhead we're talking about. So hard for characters like Ranger to deal with it. And that's gonna be a round. That round is over in like like five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, I mean that's just the damage output from Monk in general. Too. Yeah, like he, really, he has access to so many uh, substantial routes. He really accelerates the gameplay, just like that. It was the first round they finally taken, but uh, so far this round is all Goldeneye. Gonna set up that grenade. Yes, of course. We stay low this time. We're going for a few five A's, trying to catch his crazy fingers standing up, and eventually once we see the stand up, we go low with that slide from Goldeneye here. So we're gonna have a very strong combo. Setting up the grenade yet again. Oh, okay, guard castles out. Not a bad idea, dodges backwards. Tries to again weave in, but gets shot on the, in the kneecap. 
Oh, that was tricky. Changed the timing of the grenade to get a different kind of block string. Yeah. Still sat right on top of it too, so if we ended up getting caught in the grenade would actually uh <laughs> Use all the bullets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got enough bullets for this. With that, it's only one round away from advancing the winners finals. Oh. Oh. Yeah, nice armor layer right there. Oh, roll, God, it doesn't matter. It. Doesn't matter that you're out of the corner. I still got this. With that has a little bit of a life lead here. Just crouching here, waiting for me to come back. Always a good option here. A few ISs. Ooh. What are we gonna run there? Uh, we spent mana on it, so it's gonna be something to close the gap. Low. God, untimely dodge there. Tries for something there, converts out of it. <laughs> he flips out of there, gets that counter and conversion. Left off again. It's got genocide. Oh, because we went for reset. Wake up, dive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Back out of that. Here we go. Convert! Jump into convert! Oh, that'll do, that'll do. That yeah. was so good. Converted and jumped out of the neutral to that Golden Knight trying to check with to like follow with that jumping move. Right. So strong right there. Yeah, unfortunately, we gotta stop letting uh, you know crazy figures jump in on Golden. We see so many opportunities where Golden Knight get an anti-air punish and we just don't take it. We stick with regular gunshots. Or even low gunshots. Interrupting. Crazy thing is dodges that, which is, it, it works, right? It's not quite as bad, but Ranger can switch back into it, but the situation's not quite as good. Morse got Jet's time for position here with grenades out. <laughs> is that use the IS to kind of change the block to guard cancel? Yeah, noticing that the guard gauge is getting dangerously low, so Crazy Fingers could easily close this out. Okay, guard cancel again. Has conversion as well. There we go. Converts out of it. Gets a knockdown. What's the mix up? The uh, roll? Are yeah. you kidding me? Gutsy roll. Really great option right there. I was not ready for that roll. Yeah. To run up to your opponent's face like that and just roll right through. The back roll. Takes a little chip damage on purpose, mayhaps. Gets a good interrupt here. Convert. And gets, just goes low. Nice. Throw <laughs> got, got the mid dispensed on. Yeah. Spends that mid, gets big damage here. One more opening. Just like we said, the, really accelerating the pace of this match here. Yeah. Low gets blocked and guard cancels out of it. Right, Crazy Fingers looking a little bit, or excuse me, Whoa. Crazy Fingers a little bit in trouble while Crazy Fingers <laughs> maintains control. The conversion after special. Kaboom. And with that, takes another round back right away. Yeah, Crazy Fingers might actually be crazy. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be a little crazy to play this game, I think. <laughs> you gotta just randomly do a punch and convert, and maybe your opponent will flinch. Right, well, we got the rainbow jump here. We're pushing again, thanks to Scud Genocide. Okay, guard cancel. Actually, very smart maneuvering around that grenade, allowing for the armor to absorb the hit of the grenade instead of themselves. Ooh, try to risk something, but it got beaten out. Lost the MP for it. Nice. Yeah, can't can't use the lift, can't use the gunshots there, but does have a grenade in there anyway. Already an awakening here, oh. opportunity, but it gets shut down as we dash up with our GP special. And that should be it. Yeah. Put all the bullets in them. Oh, just not enough. Jesus. Pixel left. You don't want to be here. Oh no, with the grenade doesn't find the mark. Ah, uh, can't convert because they got no life left. Can't take any gray damage. We're whittling weight. These are just normals. The, the gunshots will not chip out any health because they are just normals. Oh, yeah. With that last gunshot. Able to close it out, does Goldeneye. Yeah, Goldeneye popping off. <laughs> Showing off the DNF swag right there. Yeah, I love that frame. You gotta pop off when you get to winners finals, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's been an arduous run for all the competitors here at DNF Duel. And Ranger still putting in the work, especially against some of these stronger characters that do end up showing up. Uh, you know, great set here for Goldeneye for sure. Yeah, I mean, this game is just so mentally taxing, taxing yeah. right? Unless you either gotta go full like sweat mode and you gotta care about every little interaction. Oh, did I do this right? Did I do that right? Or you gotta be like, okay, well, there's too much going on. I just gotta do what I do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So no matter which like approach you take to it, you end up like spending a lot of your mental energy just like either ignoring things on purpose or just like being really critical about them, right? Yeah. You have to make your concrete choice and try to stick with that because hesitation as well is is such a killer in fighting games. Yeah. Where you have multiple options but you can't choose one. 
and then hesitating, you end up getting jumped in with a jump fierce or you know the wake up DP happens, you name it. So remaining focused is so critical, especially at this juncture in the bracket. But we have our next competitors sitting down here and hopefully they've maintained their focus since they are on Luge's side of things. So this will be someone's last time appearing on the stream and the big sigh of relief here uh, <laughs> to come out here. I believe that was uh, uh, Danny Phantom. Yeah, Danny Phantom letting out a big sigh as they uh, start to sit down. Also a little chilly. It's a little chilly, Willie. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to stay warm up on stage. It's very lonely up there. Oh, yeah. wait yeah. a minute. Backdash. That's right, the Red Rooster Squad, the Puerto Rico gang out here. Uh, yeah, actually saw Mono sitting front row uh, to cheer on for Puerto Rico resident crank gang god. Indeed. Now, it's great to see other regions like represent this game, right? It's a game where pretty much like again, if anybody can win at this game. Right. As you saw at Arc Rebel just previously, it's just an insane game. And like pretty much the way that these matches are decided is on a hair's breadth. Yeah. Especially as you get better and better in defense for this game, which happens so quickly. And some of these changes in this version of the game were only making sense to improve the defensive experience, which is like your uh, forward roll situation, your guard cancels, um, you know, adding vulnerability, I believe, to, uh, to back dash or back yeah. step or something like yeah. that. Yeah, back dash has a bit of like foot and throw invincibility, yeah. yeah. So. so here, that's the thing is like, and what I really like about how they change defense in this game is it's still like super unique to this yeah. game, right? Like, Warrior Indomitable Spirit is such a unique mechanic because, like, on like it's not it's not a set block stun reduction. It sets your block stun to a certain amount. So like you have to have good timing to use it, but also you have to know what moves to use it against. But the also other cool thing about it is that it gives you white health even on moves that don't deal white health damage. Yeah. And by doing that, you can get more offense too. So it's just so unique to this game. It works pretty much perfectly for a DNF duel. Yeah, and, it, and honestly, Indomitable Spirit in particular, depending on the character you play, can really turn the tide for them. You have some characters that engage in Awakening a little differently, such as Troubleshooter uh, and also the uh, Berserker as well. But this time around, you, you can also influence your health bar as a defensive mechanic, which has you know, a little player to even some of the characters that don't have those opportunities to play that game. Okay, I thought this was a button check, but they're actually hitting each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going right into it. Modern video games have button check and character select. And thankfully, these players are utilizing that. <laughs> nice. Good dodge roll, but tried to punish that the drop down. Did not work out. Oh. Yeah, trying to get some meter back here. Our bull oh. players, nice hit there. Yeah, I mean, we are looking very low on that meter game. Okay. Nice little back step. Yeah, Ooh. risky. I think that was 2C that reach there from Danny. <laughs> Both players equally symmetrical pilots. Good pick up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. This will be pretty close. You got the damage. You can spend. Yeah. I don't understand why you didn't spend awakening there. Maybe you didn't trust the range, but yeah. either way, Danny Phantom closes it out there. Oh, forward roll, and I don't know what that was, but it got beaten. Uh, here, yeah, this is part of that meter efficiency from... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yo, and both of them chose the armor version. What a clash. And coming out on top, thanks to conversion, is Crank Gang God. Okay. Uh, jumping in the throw, some classic fighting and stuff. TP gets baited. Just like that, Crank Gang God evens it up one round apiece. Yeah, it's the first time we've seen that DP. It's not the best one. Um, has kind of a small. Wow, they both went the same thing, but Cranky God was faster. The block strength being very like changing the timing a bit. That armor hit hits and caused that crumple. Converts, but even more damage off it. Back down, nice input. Crank yeah. in awakening here as well, which is a massive opportunity, right? So you do have that awakening attack to really catch up on this health game. Finish. Ooh. Oh. I wonder if we we thought we would tech out a little bit earlier, or at least like later once we landed upon the ground. All right, nice. A big counter hit. Danny Phantom looking to be going down their first game against Crook. Yeah, I think so far Crank and God has like so far has had the advantage of speed as for the most part, right? In those round start interactions they've been winning a lot of them. Yeah. Just like that, I think Danny Phantom kind of realized that and started to block on Wake Up instead. 
Okay. Dash up. That was a big jump. You can hear that across the room. Yeah, I man. We didn't like your vibes. We came over to hit you with the spear. Jeez. Throw. Yeah, good option there. Why you have no meter? Ah, uh, but that missed right there. Oh, just out of range. The armor did pop up. We're trying to rebuild resources <laughs> again. That's a big opportunity there for Frank A. God to close the gap. Like, yes, you are at 48 percent meter, but. Excuse me, Danny Phantom was willing to just take those step back and just kind of watch you throw that temper tantrum from afar. Yeah, and that's the thing right there. Kranga got the jump in, converted to try to you know, do more damage, but it's so weird. Conversion like kind of changes your air momentum in a way that is different from other games, so ends up missing that combo and getting punished for it. DP gets baited. Big conversion here for Danny Phantom. One more. Baiting it out here. Oh, caught something there. Yeah. And this should spell the end here for the round and the game, too. Danny Phantom will be taking their first game. Ooh, quick one right there. Danny Phantom playing very solid. Yeah, as you were mentioning, you know, probably just letting Cranky guy like hang themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see you. I see you pressing that DP. I punish you. Now I'm going to wait on this side of the screen. And but even just movement decisions, too, were getting called out on by Danny Phantom. Like yeah. Just small things. Like, it seems like. Danny is playing a very simple game plan, but uh, the reality of it is it's a very calculated game plan, it seems that. I understand the spacing, I understand the matchup perfectly, but I can show you a thing or two about how to control space. <laughs> okay, ends it there. Whoa! Change the timing on the air landing to punish that. Really smart stuff from Danny Phantom there. Okay, just gets a knockdown reversal, back dodge. Oh. Stabbing him. Yeah, Punish the full screen. Ooh, try to dodge that, but this time it looked like maybe it gets tagged here. Looks right inside of the FedEx truck. Ooh, misses it. This could be really bad. With so much meter available. Oh, uh, maybe they'll be left with a pixel. It's pretty tough, though. I think we can dump all the meter here in the Awakening Super. I think it's going to be extremely close. Dumping all that yeah, meter, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, they got yeah. it. That's exactly why we dumped all the beater. Make yeah. sure we can cross that finish line here. Good on Crank for making that adjustment. Yeah, extremely efficient there, right? Yeah. Uh, just made sure that they had exactly enough meter to finish that up. And, and good on them for not falling apart, like, towards the end there, where, hey, mistakes happen. Let's just keep the ball rolling, try to follow up on our next uh, set here, or round, depending upon where you lose. Cool. Nice. Good little back step. Nice. We charge it up. Conversion. Ooh, good punish on that dodge roll. Yeah, need some of that shield back. Danny Phantom certainly gonna get it. He's off the field near. Okay. So tricky to uh, deal with when you're stuck in the corner unless you have that DP on deck. Like, if you have an anti-air possibility, try to use, like, the light version, especially if you're at the... Uh, oh. Ooh. Right. Close that awakening here. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should just sit right outside Ooh. of it. Ooh. So we can maintain this advantage. One more interaction. Okay. But we're so oh, low on mana here. Beats the dark kill. That was so good. Such a timely arm move. Our witness is going to kill. That was sick. I know. That was crazy. That was pretty crazy, the explosivity of that. Thank goodness we got the guard cancel there, because initially I was looking at that mana. I'm like, there's no way you have enough to kill once you pop Awakening. But that guard break happened for you in such a positive way. Let's see yeah. if we get that. And while Cranky and God had started out pretty strong, Danny Phantom seems to have made the major adaptation here. He's pretty much winning a lot of these spacing battles in a very positive, like a good, very good way. Mm -hmm. Back the character select screen as we pep talk ourselves here before we pick up that Vanguard one more time. Hopefully not the last time because loser does go home here. Yes, absolutely. Right. So here we go. Let's see if let's see if Cranking God could change up what was happening here. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's honestly just the back and forth between these two characters, right? You're still trying to push your way through some of these long-range normals, and it's the first draw that you're really worried about here. We already got the corner position as Danny Phantom Ooh. feeling very confident Ooh. that we're going to catch all these counter hits here. Okay, just swinging. I feel like Cranky has been very aggressive swinging. I think that's kind of playing into the whiff punish game by Danny, but this time Crank, very aggressive, gets the first hit in. 
but drops the combo and gets tagged by a low. Spending some meter here to keep their pressure going. That back actually does not work. Kanga got does punish it. We'll probably get their meter back in time to get a little bit of conversation as well. Mm -hmm. Jump. Ooh. Ooh. Good anti air. Yes, absolutely on that spin cycle. Yeah, really smart choice there because, you know, he can fake his jump in with that dive, right? But that spin. <laughs> Perfectly is able to punish both options. Able to roll through just to get at least a little bit closer. Attempt that with punish, not gonna find the mark though. Able to recover in time. Nice. Dude. Yeah, it's max range, so really not a lot of safe things you can do from that. Ooh, no, very one. nice. Yeah, let's wrap this oh, up. Oh, no! Big like, drop! Yeah, it's like you were talking about earlier. Dropping in this game is such a critical error. You cannot make mistakes like that because you will get called out for it. You will die for it. That is the nature yeah, of the beast absolutely. that is DNF Duel. You can't lose the game against yourself is what they always say in this game, right? You absolutely have to execute the one player part of the game perfectly. Okay, again, a good whip punish here. Dude, Kriki got him locked back in right here. Knows that he left a lot on the table right there with that last run, with that drop. Oh, God. <laughs> and running up is Danny Phantom. Doesn't have meter right now, but might get it back just in time. Yes, he does. To get that, to get that little bit of damage, he has to reset in the throw. Maintaining position here. Yeah, unfortunately that throw didn't push Frank into the uh, Too little, too late there. Never mind, we converted into it. But we're still gonna hold out this max range. Take a couple steps back. Jumps nice out over. Jump. Okay. Okay. The second hit didn't hit. Still alive here. Dives. Rolls Whoa. through the rolls. Throw back. Reversal DP. Risky. But gets it. Jumping to beat the throw. And I think Danny Phantom's going to take it with this combo. Oh, and absolutely. He does. That one mistake, I think, really weighs on your mind there. If yeah, you're cranking it God, it does seem that's what happened. That the single kill that you were supposed to have that sped right into the awakening should have been it. But Danny Phantom survived another round on the loose side of top eight here. Yeah, a really good showing from both players, Danny Fan especially, getting that adaptation right there, right? Making the right moves to kind of make sure that they stay stable yeah. and uh, went out like that. But you can't hate on what Crank and God did. They were so emotional when they finally made it in top eight. Really proud of them for doing such a great job yes. and enjoying what they were doing. But speaking of enjoying, we're going to do more DNF very soon. But for now, we're going to head to break. So see you all right, welcome back, and thank you so much for sticking with us. We have more DNF Duel action in this top eight. We've done our first round of the bracket here, and we're getting into, oh, actually, we've got one more round. One more round on the loose side, excuse me. I forgot, we went from the bottom. Now we're going back up to the top, <laughs> which is Riazzo versus Aku Dynasty showing up here. Uh, but yeah, he and just like that, um, you know, um, I think Ray's, uh, Riazzo, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Riazzo yeah, had a bit of a unique matchup in uh, top 16 where they faced off against a Monk player to kind of qualify. Now, uh, Riazzo is a Enchantress player, which is a very somewhat rare character these days. Very but, rare. But one of them always shows up in top eight for some reason. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a little bit of the unknown, I feel like, that the character keeps showing up simply by the fact that w there's only one or two, but that character can be so volatile. I think there were a couple changes to her toolkit that made her very strong. Not strong enough to outshine some of our uh, top tier characters, but still strong within her own right. Like, she's still has that place on this roster here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how this plays out because, you know, trying to deal with the teddy bear, of course, is uh, devastating. Yeah, it's a very interesting matchup. I mean, Aqua Dynasty had faced off in a Inquisitor Mirror in top 16. Right. A really close one, as Inquisitor Mirrors tend to be. But yeah, Rezo, um, you know, one thing about Enchantress is very short. Uh, she's the shortest character in the game, the yeah. part, especially while crouching. And that can change how a lot of blockchains work on her and mix up as well. So um, that does play a big factor in a lot of matchups. So uh, I think for Inquisitor specifically, like, um, it doesn't really change a lot because her blockchains are just, well, you're going to block this forever regardless of what yeah. you're doing. But um, they may change some of the math in terms of some of the jumps at times. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see how this plays out now that you got Inquisitor to deal with. Okay, letting the intro play out. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. From Enchantress, even. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the thing about Enchantress, is especially if this is your first time watching DNF, she can kind of control her bear remotely, right? It's yeah. got its own, like, kind of invincible move that you kind of use to beat anything your opponent does. But with that being said, the bear is remote, and 
at times like you can be in situations where it's not near you to help you at all. So uh, the other thing about Enchantress is she's a very, very cheap commander where she turns you into a doll yes. and it's basically GG if you get hit by it. Yeah, which is insane. I've seen it a handful of times out of uh, you know the very few moments that Enchantress has made an appearance. Oh, oh, oh. It's oh, wow. Just like that, yeah. through the smoke and the mirrors, big hit here. And again, that, there's that DP, but it gets punished. Very good patience there from Aqua Dynasty. Brings her right back down, already up to 50% life lead here. Yeah, and Enchantress is one of the lower health characters in this game. As you can see, that dot damage is adding up so fast. And a great big challenge here from Enchantress, but goes for a cross up. I didn't even see it. And with that, closes that round out quite quick. Please. Yeah, so so much visual noise on the screen here to try to keep up with this character, but uh, Dynasty, see if we can see can get this initial knockdown in again. I feel yeah. like it's gonna <laughs> be a normal. lot of this. Like, what, how do we deal with this? That normal is so good, by the way. Yeah. It's so fast. Good and roll. Yeah, out, rolled out, but then Arousal just happened to be in the air and punished it. Okay, teleport backwards. Trying to see if Aqua Dynasty will bite on anything. Yes, it's the bear will mimic what Enchantress does. Teleports back twice to get out of that situation. Yes, hold the spin cycle, but unfortunately DP out. Yeah, the pixel health left for Aqua Dynasty. DP to beat whatever that was, doesn't matter. And no meter here, can't DP again. Spends it on pinwheel, here we go. This could be one way to turn it on. Maybe get a lot of chip damage and go for a guard crush. Throw here, gets a low hit. And this could be a big turnaround here because if he can get that meter back, he can do a lot of damage with that burning dot into a pinwheel and maybe get a guard crush going. Indeed. We go water. Regular blocking, fake the throw more, more or less. Yeah, for DP. Oh. Yeah. What a time to DP there for Riaz. I'm feeling very good about that one. It was looking scary because I was wondering what the next uh, fire wheel was going to be potentially there. Especially since you're in the corner, you had the water applied, so we're looking for that damage over time with the burn series. Yeah, I guess they didn't trust it because we also did have a lot of meter. Maybe it was thinking that, oh, maybe Gar Garkhan's gonna come. Maybe I won't be ready for it. So they just didn't opt for it. Oh my goodness, that fire from off screen. There it goes, sends out the projectile, teleports behind at the last second, but misses that combo. Here we go. Here we go, projectile again. DP's out. Does Aqua Dynasty. Tries to cross out, but gets punished. Teleport again to the other side. So. Hard to see. Going back into this next round here. Fire coverage lays down yeah. and DP. We've been dp so many times in the jumping arc that I, I don't know what is the next game plan here beyond going for Blade Carpet or setting up your fire wheel again might be the potential since she's already sitting down okay. this enchantress. We got the conversion to get this extended combo. Very good stuff here for Pompu. Yeah, and that's the thing about DNF, right? If your neutral's not working out, well maybe I'll just get a random hit and it'll work out from there. Water here, baits out the throw tech, DP. Very good. Step off Ooh. and with that fireball. I do uh, like the defensive position we have from Riazzo. Uh oh. Spends that meter. Got a single touch away in the fire. Oh, from got the caught by that. Yeah. I didn't even see that projectile, ran right into it. But with that, you know, Aqua Dynasty has gotten a lot of mileage with that dash and strike, right? That's that move that yeah. it's very strong jump cancelable on hit. Gives you a lot of potential for damage and pressure. And had gotten two hits with it, but tried it there and it ran right into a projectile. Ooh, trade, to trade to again. I, that had to have been the 5 B start there. Yeah, but it traded with the first hit and yeah. DP's out. DP on offense and knocked Yo, back into the corner. That is the worst. Interaction to see for DP, and it had to have been that he tried to roll through, and we were still facing that one direction the DP came through on the other side. Yeah, turns off the doll, is facing a Josh, and gets that DP hit here to turn it around. Will low hit, and with that, has so much meter, you expect him to be able to kill from this. With that dot damage going, mid combo, and reapplying it, and beautiful. that should be enough. Yeah, that was a very beautiful route, coast to coast we go. And an excellent juggle to, the get, to get this awakening finish. Burn the witch, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you know about Trigger? <laughs> so here we go. Aqua Dynasty finally on the board with a round, and that could be what you need to get started. But once again, Rouser with this very Ooh. reliable game plan. Yeah, nice little launcher here. Fireball to put full screen again. See IS is still activated here, just outside the range of. Uh, Bear. Force really converts, air fireball, keeping that wall up. Regular fire on the ground, projectiles, you name it, gotta deal with all of it. A little pixel help left at this rate. 
time. Okay. Spinner Rooney. The no! class hit whips. That is so unfortunate. We used that to get that forward momentum to try to maintain that corner control. Unfortunately, the final hit pushing ourselves way on the opposite side to give that escape route for Riazzo. That, that did not go according to the plan. Yeah, and that's that one thing we mentioned about her shortness, right? And Genesis is so short, just weird interactions like that happen like, from time to time. Here we go, corner set up again. Fire from the holy water. Really adding up this damage here. Yeah, all the way to 50%. Yeah. The DP's out. Yeah. All higher breath, projectiles. Yeah, thanks to all these awakened benefits here. All right, full screen scenario. There's not a whole lot that uh, Aku Dynasty can do at that full screen position. Ooh. They'll have to get in, and they find a way to get the throw. Yeah, reversal throw, good option there. Against that cross up. Gets the bear, gets another throw, another throw will kill here. Conversion. Oh, oh no. I thought for sure we could get the punish on that DP being whipped, but does it look like we will? Final touch Ooh, scenario. Right into the oh, fireball. No! That should kill. Oh my goodness. Well done here. We see the crowd popping off in the background there for uh, Guilty Gear Strive. No, I think it's for this. Oh wait, they're alive. <laughs> You're right. They must have been. It was. Over the back shoulder, we got that crowd there. Right? That camera yeah, right there. exactly. DP punished. And Riazzo will move on here in losers. Yes. Well done, Riazzo, continuing it off here in this top eight series for DNF Duel, maintaining excellent control of the Chantress, which still is uh, a beast to be reckoned with. I mean, we did try to maneuver as best we could some of those specials from Inquisitor to, to close that gap. I do like we saw more spin cycle out of this Inquisitor to do just that. Right, right. But also, we kept getting those DP interrupts from en Enchantress, and even trying to deal with Teddy Bear at full screen was so difficult for en uh, Inquisitor to do. Because she, outside of like her step dash, right, the, her dash command rather, she doesn't really have a whole lot that can safely traverse that without having to contend with Teddy Bear. Yeah, like against Enchantress, it's really helpful if you have, if you have a move that just hits her from full screen. Right. right. But Enchantress, Inquisitor is one of those few characters in this game that is just relies more on speed than yeah. kind of range. Yeah. And so with that, you know, you're seeing that kind of matchup play out in that way. Uh, but in speaking of matching up, matchups playing out a certain way, looks like we've got another Vanguard mirror. Oh my goodness, another one? It is another one. I do believe Luful um, fell down from winner's yes. side, playing Vanguard against their opponent, the Inquisitor. And uh, I do believe that Danny Phantom had just fresh off of winning a Vanguard mirror. I guess it's prime for this, if yeah. nothing else. Both setting up with the 50% cube here as opposed to the classic 30. Buttons to be set in yeah. this matchup. <laughs> This Danny yeah. Phantom character, it's been quite, I don't think the last uh, DNF duel at uh, Frosty's, I'm pretty sure Danny Phantom was not there. So I've seen Danny Phantom on TNS brackets before for uh, DNF duel. So it's great to see Danny in person. I didn't realize that Danny was such a character. That's awesome. All right, here we go. So Lufo, I mean, we saw already Danny Phantom was able to kind of, you know, pretty much gauge his opponent's spacing, right? And then kind of, yeah. you know, very impressive whip punish game, very patient. Uh, also, really good um, character specific answers, right? I remember yeah. uh, one time, um, you know, Crank God had gone for like one of those dive setups or with the jump and just punished it with that, you know, with the uh, uh, anti air special move. Oh, jeez. For a big trade. I wonder which trade was better, honestly, either way. Lufo's out here swinging, so, yeah. but gets the hit anyway. <laughs> That's a big spend on those swings, yeah. though. Yeah. Does need a little meter to do damage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it whips that's it. beneficial with the quick 2A to start things off here. Whoa, missed the combo though. Yeah. Ran so far, I uh, forgot to pick up the milk on the way to the store. Such a shame. <laughs> and I gotta eat my raisin brand with orange juice. Oh, that's tough. Here we go using the IS. The armor, armor they both oh! armor, they both convert. <laughs> but Lufo coming out on top there. Very volatile with a low start here. One final Ooh. touch is what we're looking for yeah. from Lufo when we do find it. That hit right there, you've seen it many times, it's just packed and you don't get much else off of it. Sometimes if that's all you need, that's all you need. Right. This is max range. Yo, that big which... crumple. Yeah, you know you got caught by the Ooh. executioner. Okay, just backing off. Still a little meter here. <laughs> Didn't try to challenge that at all. But... All right, converts though to continue this pressure. IS pushes far Ooh. enough away here, but Lufo's still not able to challenge. And it's still Danny Phantom's run. Nice. Good frame trap right there, and that should be it. 
very good stuff here. Luffy, oh my goodness, does Luffy taste victory or was that was that a gag? Like what happened? <laughs> Big start here for Lupo. And getting catching that back roll, maybe? Looks like they caught Danny Phantom moving around. Bring it down. Set here. Goes for the safe jump setup here, potentially, but brings it down. Ooh. Oh, conversion oh. dodge, but doesn't work. Yeah, Lupo is ready. Yeah, excellent conversion series for both players. No escape. One more spin. Should kill it. it does succeed. Lufel with a game on the board against Danny Phantom in the mirror. Yeah, but this is what happened last time too, right? Danny Phantom lost the first game, came back with a strong 3-1. We'll see if they'll make the right adaptations. Right. Da rat dashes forward. That's crazy. Just outside the range here. Maya's a little eight. A little late, not eight. Oh my goodness. Maya <laughs> does eat though. Yeah. Giving that you a little bit of white health so you can convert. The big thing for both Jeez. players right now. It's not enough armor to survive the drill, though. Yeah, nice. The anterior hit. The challenge. Still excellent route for Lupul. Again, just outside that 50%. Doesn't want to push okay. that awakening opportunity for Danny Phantom. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That yeah. cross up. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. It doesn't matter because Danny Phantom's going to take all this damage right here. But we have guard buttons. But we don't use them. No. Oh, my bad. All right, well, at least we're a little bit puffed up thanks to Awakening. That's if Lufel gets a chance to use it. Oh, yeah, we've seen that before. Beating out a potential throw right there with that air special move. And with that, it's probably going to take this round. Excellent. OTG. Awakening for finish. Yeah, just a little extra sauce, right? With the, Yo, I'm glad we didn't get that shot. Oh, Oop, man. Oopsie doopsie. <laughs> Got a little, you gotta get a live mosaic for that. Yeah, Lufel out here. Whoa, the bat banners. Here we go, both players crouch. Just starting a big pickup here for Danny Phantom. Okay. Oh, that was really good IS. That might have made it advantage for Lufel in that specific situation. Mm -hmm. Trying to take this guy's overtime here. Good spend. So much help. Ooh. I mean, oh, yeah, that's the thing about Vanguard's DP. It's really, really up forward, if, if nothing else, right? You know, it's better than what it used to be. That's true, yeah, it was but it wasn't good in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that advantage right there closes it out. Lufo, pretty much a very commanding lead right here. Mm -hmm. Has all the answers so far. Goes right back into it, does Danny Phantom. Hold forward at round start again. Yeah. So he might have just been a little bad. Yeah, trying to see if Lupo will press something, right? Yeah. But so far, Lupo has not bitten on that. Yeah, starting with another good start with a big combo here. You know, 40% is probably oh. ideal. Ooh, okay. Gets the DP to hit. Ooh, okay. Yep. Good challenge here. One more interaction after this combo series to get the finish. There we go. Whoa. There we go. Yeah, fake meaty. Baits out the back dash. <laughs> Lupo does take it. How do you plan for that fake meaty? How do you do this? I don't It's so hard, right? Because it all looks almost exactly the same. And you play the same character, so you got to pull out like the funny yeah. stuff, you know? But this time, Danny Phantom, has, like as they mentioned, has not been on any that the dash would have been this time. This goes for an honest light attack at the beginning. Catches that roll with a punish here. Doesn't have really meaty to do much more damage, but that's okay. I guess for your life, that armor, good recognition here from Lupo, or excuse me, from Danny Phantom. Yeah, able to keep control here. Has meter nice. for conversion, converts that hit. Go start back into it with a pretty hefty spend after some MS skills. I think this should be enough. I yeah. spend it all. Yeah. With that, Danny Phantom on the board, still staying off, staying, keeping it alive here. Because if he loses one more round in this situation, he will be out of the tournament. Just round start throw. Oh. Nice. Bring it down. Yeah, not sure what Lufa tried there, but got caught in there. Another big combo here for Danny Phantom. Spends the rest of the meter. Here we go for a throw. Ooh. A very delayed throw, but Lufa challenges with that air selection as he had done before. Yes. Oh, that's not a route that you're looking oh. for. And the roll again, Danny Phantom, the sneaky movement here. And with the, all that meter, could probably cash all of it out and close this out and get on the board for oh, the first yes. time. Oh, yes. We can spend this all. We certainly do. The final MS will seal it out. And with that, Danny Phantom is on the board. Maybe it took a little bit longer, but finally has like maybe a read on how Luffy wants to play this matchup. 
Go round start. Oh. Dash up, but still got caught by two way. Yeah, dash up right there. I mean, he's gone for either dash up or they both go for that heading ladder deck, right? But this time, Blue Bolt, very smart opener. Goes for low. Okay, they both respect right there. I understand. Oh, yeah, jump. big jump. One of the things we haven't really mentioned, but when you get hit by an MS, you lose all of your recoverable health. And that did come into play right there as they lost it all. Yep, yep. IS, push away here. All the corner does Danny. They're swinging. Puts themselves in awakening here. Oh my goodness, what a big hit. About enough meter to finish, and if not a pixel of health. Yeah, it's gonna be a pixel here. No, we got it. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, that mana eventually started coming. That's the thing yeah. too, like Vanguard doesn't need mana to do most of his combo extensions, but if he has it, can extend it even more. Certainly. Nice little dodge. Oh yes, another good interaction won by Danny Phantom spacing right there. Having that perfect timing on that. And it's gonna probably put Luffy in a wake. No, just outside of it. Gets the empty jump low. Doesn't have a lot of meter, but enough to start like a relatively extended combo here. Yeah, I mean, great start here for Danny Phantom for that corner position again. Luffy not finding an opportunity to escape and gonna get caught for trying. Yeah. Nice good punish on the jump in there. Perfect timing for Danny Phantom. And ties it up to all. That was quick. I, one yeah, more. one more. Suddenly, Danny Phantom's spacing has gotten quite immaculate, if I say so myself. Getting a lot of those big mid range hits. Very timely jumps. Yeah, it forces that to whip, but Gut does get counter hit by that. Short combo here because they're so far away. Oh, yes. Yeah. Caught them flinching. Yeah, that moment of hesitation right there can cost you so much. Lupul waiting for Danny to open <laughs> themselves up. But Danny, quicker on the draw. Yeah, read the conversion. Used that, like, that spiral spear to do lots of uh, hits so that it beats out the armor move. But gets tagged as well. Nice jump in. I guess oh. threads the needle. Good luck trying to block that. That's the thing. The previous time had gone for a throw right after the jump in. And with all this meter, is going to be able to take it. So far, it's looking like six straight rounds could be the end of it at this point as Danny Phantom is now a match point where they previously been one round away from being knocked out. Indeed. All right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Tricky whoa, stuff, getting but fancy a with massive it. spend on mana. Yeah, getting fancy with it for that one hit. And that may be, <laughs> may be a thing that causes an issue later further down the line as they won't have mana for something else. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, tries to convert that, but gets tagged out of it. And if Phantom doesn't have much meter, offs for a reset, a safe one. Good rollback. Spence meter, risky stuff. Yeah, I mean, Danny Phantom, in terms of resources, <laughs> is certainly taking advantage of this. Lufo uh, is just swinging yo. like crazy right yeah. now. Danny Phantom, keeping that long range spacing, staying out of it, really, honestly, more than anything. I don't want to be there. Oh, oh, that could have been a critical jump in, but it ends up being on Lufo's side. It gets the hit in here. Conversion to help out here. Nice, nice roll out again. Danny Phantom's defense is just superb right now. And a spiral spear could kill, even though most of them doesn't do that much damage. Has to be careful not to run into that. Right, we're converting quite oh. a lot here, but the throw to start things off. Big Final throw. touch is what we're looking for. Honestly, it's a one touch scenario either side. That is true. This is the NF we're talking about yeah. here. I mean, look at all the mana that we have here on the side of the loop. We just need the one hit, no chip kill, right? So. Waiting for guard break opportunity is Danny Phantom, or we catch Lufal trying to reach when they shouldn't be. Ooh, scary jump in. Oh, oh got attacked by that. And with that, gonna get some good damage here, but too far away for a real combo. Exactly. Yeah, not quite gonna get our kill here. Spending 10 seconds meter. left. Yeah, just waiting it out. Gets thrown, and the throw takes it. My goodness. That was so close. That was such a long round right there, and still a stressful one nonetheless. And Danny Phantom knew darn well that Lufal could have killed at any given moment, but fortunately was not in the cards for a single touch of death there. Very careful pressure here right now. Yes. Don't want to get caught by a random move from Vanguard. Oh, there it is, the sweep convert, but does not pick up the combo. Yeah. Careful here, checking, nice roll. Nice set, yeah, I like that, gets that spacing back, has conversion, uses it. Big block string here. Using IS to prevent that vacuum, big part of it. Oh, see, we're learning. We did convert to try to block that jump in for Danny. We succeed, but now resources look very low for Danny Phantom. Blueful with all the money in the bank. Oh. Beautiful counter hit, pop fake into a conversion. 
not going to get our kill here, but it is going to be a hefty chunk, even if we spend Awakening. It's going to be alive. Yeah, back roll versus front roll. It's still Lufal's turn has the advantage here in terms of frames. Goes for the air special. Catches a jump out, nice. and I think this is going to be it. Oh my goodness, after all this work that we put in on the side of Danny Phantom, it yeah. should have been, you know, a couple more decisions earlier that we had the dub there, but still Lufal, Lufal standing strong standing out on top. I mean, what was crazy about that set was literally how Lupul was swinging like mad at full screen. And Danny's playing outside of it. I thought for sure we had activated Ultra Instinct. We're able to dodge any of these attacks that are coming through and still able to close that gap and get a kill, but Lupul still stood strong at the end of it all. Yeah, that was a really, really intense, like, like set right before that, right? They yeah. only needed a pixel more to kill. Ended up getting killed on chip convert into a throw that did, you know, throws don't normally do that much damage, but right. if you're in range of being killed by their throws are so fast, they're so hard to tech in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And able to sneak one in was Luful there for that finish. And now moving on to our loses round two. It's going to be Crazy Fingers versus Riazzo coming back up on the stage. Yeah, Riazzo. Um, she had, you know, a really strong show with the enchantress, right? That neutral game is so strong. But, um, you know, I think that they had also won against a Monk earlier in the bracket as well. I think that one of the things we've mentioned already is that Monk, um, you know, has a really strong mix-up. But against yeah. short characters, there are situations where it doesn't quite work out. Yeah, and Monk does have, like, a lot of tools available to them to that, that can bully through some of these things. Uh, it's going to be a lot of, of work for Enchantress to kind of keep Monk locked down because Monk is so in your face. Um, so we'll see if Enchantress can kind of survive the onslaught. That is the Fist of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, let's see. I think that, um, you know, I think that the way that the neutral game ends up playing out a lot of times is that, you know, like, Enchantress is a broom, it's just so much active frames, right? Yeah. But, you know, Monks has that, you know, that overhead that has so much armor, that has a lot of different right. tools that are just so strong. We're just kind of see how they play out here. And I do know that, like, if you autopilot your mix-up with Monk, you could get blown up by Enchantress, right? But right. We'll see if, um, you know, Crazy Fingers has, like, the requisite knowledge here. Yeah, I mean, gosh, when this character came out, when Monk came out, just the the wave of Monk players and how aggressive they were, like, it really changed the tide. And again, like I said at the top, I was surprised we had Berserker because that was almost, not Berserker, excuse me, Breaker, uh, because that was almost the same story there. It was just the new, these two new characters really running the town uh, were so difficult to deal with. But, it, you know, the knowledge check with Enchantress is also just as difficult because that visual noise is going to become a factor very quickly here for Crazy Fingers. All right, here we go. Backing off is Riazzo. Into a sandwich pressure, throw in the corner. And <laughs> there it is. That armored overhead. So powerful. Look, I mean, 50%, you only yeah. did like a seven hit combo. That's all you, seven hits is all I need. Jesus. Oh, good, good block, yeah, using that G button. <laughs> Okay, oh, back yeah. into that. Don't forget the teddy bear is behind you. Okay, extends the combo a little bit. Back to neutral. Weaves through, but DP was waiting. Has no meter this time. Okay, a little bit has come back. Yeah, that's the thing you gotta watch out for yeah. from Riazzo is that Riazzo's ready to pull the trigger on the DP opportunity against their opponents here. We've seen it before in the previous set. But every time we had a jump in Ooh. opportunity, it was still blown up. You left the gap, we're still gonna blow it up. Air to air. Uh oh, this could be bad. Yeah, you can't block when you're a doll, so you just get reset endlessly until you turn back into a person. And like we mentioned before, this could be GG on a single hit. Yeah, I've been looking at this route. You got shit. Yeah, that's a perfect KO. <laughs> One command throw is all it takes. The grappler of this game is, in fact, Enchantress. Yeah, it's. Pretty and it's a rare sight to see. I, again, I think I can only count on one hand how many times I've seen the uh, doll transformation actually hit in this game. I mean, it's just so scary that people yeah. are always holding up. But oh, went for it again, but just out of range. Looks like Crazy Fingers gets a combo for it. Some pressure yes. tries to bait out that Ooh. teleport. Ultimately does, but a second one gives the advantage of Riazzo. Trying to go for that little tornado uppercut right there. Riazzo with the teleport punish. Oh no! Wow. <laughs> that is probably it. You can't block in this state. And we do think this will be the last combo for the sprout. Unless it drops! <gasps> ah! But it didn't matter in the end. Yeah, I mean, I saw Riazzo really waiting for that moment, that opportunity. And when it did arrive, wasn't quite able to close that out here. Either way, crazy fingers. Back sway, comes back in, gets hit by DP, and another one. Gotta block those exploding dolls. Tries to get a punch in here. It's tagged by Enchantress as normal. 
Ooh, wave, tried to, yeah. yeah, tried to back sway, didn't work. Fireballs, I like the run up here, but yeah. gotta be so careful. The teddy bears, you know, that safety net for Chantress. Ooh, tried nice to get dash. through that, yeah, it gets punished. That's gonna be another, Whoa. not another round overhead, but yeah, another perfect. Now Riazzo can't even see. Yeah. <laughs> Riazzo is two up 2-0. Two uh, once again, as I mentioned before, you know, I think Enchantress has a, quite a good game plan against Monk. It's just one of those things that's really hard for Monk to deal with. Right. Here in this corner here, finds that aerial opportunity. It's actually a good call here for Crazy Fingers, but right back out with DP. Another, Another one. one, yeah. And here DP, it works. Are you jumping me? Oh! I need DP. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that was a double teleport there, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't home. Oh, okay, nice block string right there. Try to disrespect it with something. Yep. Guard cancel. Brilliant. Straight. Jesus. That's Conversion. Straight punch. Yeah. No teddy bear for your safety here. Uh, but right into DP. What a call out here from Riazzo. Uh, Massive life lead. Bombs away. Takes a little help. Yeah, I gotta be so careful on the approach. Of course, not gonna get the chip out. But at the end of the day, a single touch is all that Riazzo uh, needs, and it's the DP for you trying to dash into my territory. Yeah, I would have liked to see an opportunity like a little bit earlier while Riazzo was still in exhaustion. Right. But ended up waiting too long until the exhaustion ran out. This could be tough here. Ooh, nice okay. time. Yeah, oh, but you still got the side spot. That's unfortunate to put yourself back in the corner for that. Big counter hit there. Back to teleport. Gets out of that situation. Blocks the cross up. Oh, oh, nice throw. Ooh, Ooh. big convert. Yeah, that was huge. Big Able damage. We threw the attack from the teddy bear. OTG finished. Crazy Fingers finds the round. That is a big round for Crazy Fingers, as that is the first one they've been able to win in this situation, but barely staving off the elimination. Is Crazy Fingers on if they lose this next round? Jesus. Punch the ball. Trade. Oh, my goodness. Converts that. Fire. Yeah, but look at how much mana we have. Unfortunately, down to exhaustion states. A little bit of extended time. Overhead. Overhead pickup from Crazy Fingers with some stock of mana to at least steal away some health from MS skill. Oh! The back weave into that is just so deadly. Cold Crazy Fingers. And with that, on the board. Okay. Playing at full screen here. Oh! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, we call an overhead, but you know, that also has armor too. Yeah, yeah. With that, another, just, you know, stagger hit, right? All right, pulls right back in. Oh, block on that DP. Yeah. That's the round. Very good stuff. Crazy Fingers with a mad quick adjustment right now. I mean, it looks so strong. We go for the jump back, pull the opponent in. Unfortunately, overextended right there, trying to get that uppercut. We will get punished. And I love that we're now blocking these DPs. We're getting used to the tendency from Riazzo here. Goes low. Ends the combo. Yeah, just a jump in me. Yeah, safe jump. I like that decision right there. That's the jump B right there. Got the pullback for the second hit. Blocks it, yeah. Guard cancels out. Oh! Sways, but blocks the overhead. Yeah, trying to get right oh. back in there, and what a finish here. Crazy fingers with another game. My goodness, just letting it rip. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, a, sudden, a sudden change of fate right here. Crazy fingers, just letting the fists fly. I mean, those fingers do be acting crazy on that controller to get, get this game. Ooh, I like that. Control that ground space with that jumping move. Yeah, and again, that back overhead. sway overhead. This could be the round. This is that meter back. No! It's been a consistent go to for Crazy Fingers right now. Oh. By trying to call out the timings of where Riazzo wants to go for reversal. And Crazy Fingers has the mark. Final chance for Riazzo here. Otherwise, it's all over. DP gets blocked. DP, good safe jump. Yeah, that back swing. So powerful. Two fireballs. Just kind of space Crazy Fingers back out here. Oh, good punish on that dodge yeah. roll. Or if we thought the uh, Teddy was going to attack, but instead Enchantress makes a strike. OTG pickup. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Good spacing. Right back down again. Final interaction Ooh. here for Crazy Fingers. That full Riazzo's run up. going to tie it up here. No, drop to... Ah! Ooh. Too scared. Mm -hmm. Oh, guard cancel. Oh, straight punch! Another one! No way. Overhead. That's, That's it. You're dead. 
Unbelievable. What a clutch finish there oh. for Crazy Fingers. <laughs> a big, big clutch finish for Crazy Fingers. You can't. You cannot drop these combos. You just can't. That is the nature of the Beast of DNF Duel. A single drop can end it all for your run, and that's what it was in that corner position there. Enchantress literally on the cusp of victory. You one more touch, it would have been over. But then we go for the big Lariat here from Monk to get the finish here. Let's take a look at where we're at now, because this is a crazy lineup in this bracket here. Crazy fingers advancing over Riazzo. And what started as a strong set to O lead, reverse sweep, crazy fingers fights their way into losers semis up against Lufal. And then up on the winner's final side, we do have Monocat up against Golden Eye to get back to that Ranger. It will be our next set to running up to that winner's finals. Yeah, here we go. A matchup we haven't seen yet in this block in particular. It's going to be Inquisitor versus Ranger. I mean, it's impossible since there is only one Ranger, but yeah. <laughs> either way, we'll see how this matchup will play out. So as we saw in the first match, that um, Goldeneye has played against Crazy Fingers. Golden, like, Goldeneye was really good at keeping out with those gunshots, right? But Inquisitor oh, yeah. is a very fast character. Has actually still fast projectile too, right? So yes. um, can also make things happen that way. So we, I do think that it'll be a different matchup dynamic here. Yeah, this matchup has, you know, come across GoldenEye's uh, table several times before. It's been a matchup that they're fairly used to. And I'm sure Monica has certainly seen all the footage out there of GoldenEye or just all the Rangers in general that have really made uh, DNF Duel such a, you know, a, a gunfight of a game here, uh, for lack of a better term. Quizzer does have some tools, like I said, to close the gap. I think it's going to be the jump spin that really helps out. But again, the space that Goldeneye likes to play at here, I think that's going to be a tricky space to be in. Um, you know, we're going to have preemptive gunshot set up. We can land into a gun hawk by mistake. There's so much potential here for Ranger to make that full screen presence very annoying. And let's see how, especially the opener too, will mean everything, yeah. right? We expect Goldeneye to back off, but maybe they'll get a little cheeky there and try to like open up with a little mid range gunshot to prevent any advance from Money Cat. Yeah, and again, immediate. Back up, grenade set up here. Not gonna end up activating on top of uh, uh, Monica here, okay. but certainly a threat. Yeah, top of the string guard cancel. I like that. Get a little more plus strength because they're so high in the air. And with that, uses that to get in. All right, let's see if Goldeneye finds a way out here. That damage over time really Ooh. adding up with no challenge here. And it was supposed to be guard cancel, but we got uh, the conversion instead. Okay, guard cancel back. The conversion done. Whoa. Okay. Oh, yes. Look at all that scratch damage. Yeah, you're gonna lose it all right here. Yeah. And I think with the Wagon is gonna be pretty close to choose to go for it. Yeah, her health is not real high. There we go. Okay. Pull up a chair, chat. You know what time it is. It's Ranger time. I bet you thought I was gonna say we were killed. Because it will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, never a doubt, honestly with that very strong first round. But I think I, I like what I saw from Minicat right there. Which unfortunately, does get caught. As we mentioned before, Goldeneye has mixed up between backing up and just standing yeah. on the ground, right? Especially with this gunshot aside, corner position with grenade. Keeps okay. you in position with gunshots from above. Yes, plus great still whittling away at guard gauge. Guard is about to get crushed, Ooh. but with that, wake up pinwheel. Or I guess yeah. reversal pinwheel works out quite well there. I mean, as low as possible to the uh, ground as we could be for that one. Nice pick up into the corner. Can you block oh. Guard cancel will not work here. Yeah, untimely guard cancel. Oh, kind of missed that setup. Get back thrown into the corner. Ooh. And that meaty is going to kill it. Yeah, one small mistake on guard cancel. That's A-OK -okay for Golden Eye. Flat yeah. off. Yeah. One shot hero here. Yeah. I think that, like, you know, Monica had the opportunity to take that, but. Yeah, that untimely drop right there, and just an awkward situation ends up taking it. Yeah. Slides in, do after it, pick up to the sky. <laughs> already set up, another stun genocide, 50% lead is already there. We're trying to IS for our life, and yet we are still sending it all away. It just gets more and more expensive here. You're trying to save your guard gauge, but look at the scratch damage you're spending for it. And Goldeneye just made that not worth it entirely to go for IS. Yeah, just, just turning away all of your health, 
can't do anything, right? You yeah. need a guard cancel in that situation, but they're just so high in the air that it's so difficult. Yeah. And the range that Goldeneye is playing at, you're continually holding on to IS, but that constant scratch spend is huge. You're looking for a conversion opportunity. Maybe not build up as much scratch damage as you did with that IS spent, but enough to at least look for a conversion attempt to close the gap. Goes for the flip and sides back into the corner. Another grenade set up on the way here. Snug down inside. Okay. Ooh, what a bait. Yeah. Try to go for that conversion, like I was saying here. Try to pick an opportunity to shut down this offense with Goldeneye. Spending everything. Hi Ooh, got that guard crush. Yeah, it's nice MS spend as soon as possible here. Make all that work worth it for yourself here. And with that dot damage, this is likely gonna kill it with an awakening super. Ooh, TG! Finish it off. Very nice. Very clean. I like that too. They had gone for a block stream that you don't commonly see with the right. Visitor, right? And I think that I don't I don't think that um, Goldeneye was ready for it. Wasn't really spending IS the way that we expect to right. end up getting guard crush. Oh, we'll take that trade, I suppose. Absolutely. Nice. Slides in, side swap. Same side. Yeah. Got genocide. Tricky stuff here, but we're ready to block. Yeah, nice. Again, using that guard cancel to get a good opening. And with that dot damage, just adding up so quickly. But uses that as a block string instead. Really tricky. And this is going to kill. My, oh my, how the tides have turned. One all. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the thing about Ranger, right? It always feels like, oh my goodness, Ranger's unbeatable. And then when he dies, it's like, well, he's dead instantly. <laughs> what happened to him? And that's the other thing of it, too, is that the damage potential of Inquisitor, when you're backing it up with that damage over time, thanks to the Holy Water, it makes it all the more terrifying in this matchup here in particular. Just outside the range Ooh. of Blade Carpet, but unfortunately, a single toe will still burn. Yeah. Gotta watch your toes. Pick up here. Damage, another file. Ooh. Ooh, uh, ooh. To jump out. Yeah. Then Hawk to pick up here. Ooh, misses that extended combo. Ooh, it hit. <laughs> I guess it got crushed. That's why. All right, there we go. That's true, yeah. Got an extra lease on life. We're gonna have to guard cage after this if he even survives. Okay, has to block this. Pretty much running out of health. The planet Gargant is looking pretty healthy. Block. Yeah, try to DP that. Yeah. Great awareness here from Goldeneye. Right. It's like Lid Knight just outside of the range. And they will slide into the DM to grenade on deck to carry full coast to coast corner situation. He's out the grenade. Oh, yeah, those are so tricky. Yeah. All that guard gauge energy from Gunhawk. I mean, these two have played each other several times, so now we're starting to get used to those ideas. Like, you're trying to fade out, oh like, my you're trying to fade out like a DP interruption. I see a grenade in front of me. I'm not falling for this shenanigan again, but Goldeneye only needs a single touch oh, here. To get the oh, yeah, the guard yeah. crush. Oh, but too far away. There we go. There we go. Almost dropped yeah. it there, Goldeneye. What are we doing? Yeah, I like the spacing right there just outside of that Gunhawk, but. Using regular gunshots to get, finish that guard crush off. Yes, 2-1 lead right now for Goldeneye as we go back to the character select screen. Here we are. We do have Ranger locked in, of course, by Goldeneye. Let's take a moment to think about how we can perceive Monica. Really processing these interactions here. FGC chant going off. Goldeneye being a part of it as they're kicking off Street Fighter 6 on the main stage. <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing about DNF Duel. This community is so tight that they all constantly play each other. They're all learning from each other here, so. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's, stage. it's a very uh, well-knit community. And with that, you know, they, everyone knows like the, the player specific Yomi gets so deep here. Exactly. Right? Like, why would you do that? Well, I was reading that you're going to do this other thing that's <laughs> two steps ahead. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, DP. DP. First one we've seen from, from Goldeneye. Yeah, that's very true. All right, bring it back over here. Nice cross up to get the knee into the corner position here. It's got genocide a few times with grenade. Locked in. Yeah, big block here. And again, Ranger does so much damage to your guard gauge. You gotta get those really like ISs on point. But when you IS, you lose all that white health, and with that hit, it's gonna kill. 
shooting on Scud Genocide. <laughs> what is that, perfect? Yeah, it's a perfect. I mean, that's that's the thing about this matchup is that, like, his, his Oki is so oppressive. Right. Right. Well, just slide back to the corner, and Monocat is not thrilled about this interaction right now. Yeah, this round can go exactly the same way that the last one did. It was Oki Man. That was nice. very nice. The grenade, and we're expecting it this time, but uh, DP is there. You're right back where you started. Can't challenge. We're waiting to see if we got that DP to come out here for Monocat. Converts. Crosses up. up. Oh. That was a very timely cross up here. It has so much meter. I think they can close it out here. Go. Spin. Push it back out. OTG. Yeah. Very nice. That cross up was all it took. Again, you know, it's not over until it's over in this type of game, right? You still have your opportunities. And certainly, Monocat taking hold of their own destiny for that round. Take another one here, but still not out of the woods yet. It is Ooh. the final game point here for GoldenEye. Should they succeed, they sit in grand finals. Okay, this, wow, a nice interrupt right there. Okay. Okay. Yes, block on the uh, Cold Eye was ready for it. Yeah, a very good bait right there. Nice. Grenade to extend the combo. And it's gonna be that situation where you gotta deal with this really long block string. Yep, and just outside that grenade, such a threat, and another grenade toss here. Keeping it safe with Gunhawk, just make sure that we don't have that opportunity to go for reversal out. Spin cycle, yeah. burns it with conversion. That's a ton of health gone. Goldeneye advances to the Grand Finals winner's side with Monocat having such a hard time trying to figure out how to get out of those corner situations. Yeah, it's just really hard because, you know, Ranger's blockings are just so strong. He does leave some gaps with some gunshots, right? Like, yeah. sometimes they go for the standing gunshot because it is faster and, like, you could crouch under it. But then, okay, well, but now, like, are you able to react that that even happened, right? Right. That's what's so hard about dealing with Ranger's blockings in the setups. Yeah, in Inquisitor doesn't really have a whole lot in terms of reversal opportunity, right? She has to find, like, we saw time and time again, we go for IS just to build, like I said, that uh, that what scratch damage to get the conversion, to take that moment in time to see if we can make that interruption happen. And the layer layered offense that GoldenEye had resorted to made it very difficult. We had the one opportunity where we did get the pinwheel out, mm -hmm. but Grenade was right there, so that was a full stop to your offense. Yeah. You could have tried to corpse walk or at least, like, side swap, but ultimately, when's that timer going off on the grenade? And there's so much you were already paying attention to in the first place. That's at the back of your mind instead of the forefront. Yeah, exactly. And that just what's so challenging about fighting him, right? But if you can do it, we did see rounds where he completely melted, right? Yes. So, so you know, a very strong position is GoldenEye. Ready to sitting pretty in grand finals. And but before we get back to that side of the bracket, we do have to do loser semis. Yes. Which is going to be Lufo versus Crazy Fingers. Crazy Fingers hot off of a... Really like spicy comeback, honestly. Yeah. Like three yeah. straight games to oh take it back. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, uh, Lufo locked in on his previous match. He was uh, up 2-0, then 2-2 final game. Uh, but it ended up managed to clutch it out. So, you know, yeah. looking good for him. Yeah, both players, when uh, when they needed it most, were able to find their uh, inner strength to lock it in and take the W here. We'll get our character selected. It'll be Vanguard versus Monk and Lufo. Always ready for this game here. All right. What? A little fist bump action right there, and it's going to be Monk versus Vanguard. Now, we haven't actually seen this matchup play out in top eight yet, and right. I do think that, like, some of Monk's strengths play in this in this matchup specifically, but Vanguard has a lot of, like, tools that have a ton of active frames can sometimes just work through some of those dashes that Monk is trying to attempt. Right, and the scary thing is that both characters have that armor, right? You know, yeah. you have the Executioner armor from uh, the Vanguard, but a little more terrifying armor from Monk, especially in the overhead, or if we end up going low here. See how the back play series kind of helps out for Crazy Fingers, if anything. Start with the back jump. Yeah, I mean, look at that, already armored up, and taking our time is Lufus, so that's a smart call. Ooh, armor through it, yeah. this conversion. Wow, didn't jump cancel. <laughs> Converts it. This match is, they haven't hit each other and they both lost half their health. Yeah, I mean, you know, both armor situations here. Crazy Fingers calling it out for conversion to blocks. We're finally getting opened up. Lupul is in Awakening. And just outside the range of Crazy Fingers. There we go. <laughs> they both convert again. Ooh. Uh, ran into that. No meter, but yeah. has Awakening. I think that was either the roll that we got called out by there. Uh, not certainly the forward way. But uh, Lupul with that Awakening for the finish. And like it doesn't feel like that round went like that, but they they lose so much help from their own offense and defense that like it feels great. Jesus. 
Corner carry. And the wind goes low. We all know why. The overhead is so scary. So hard to deal with. Jump up. One, two, three. Uh, okay. You know what? We'll take it. It's perfect. Jesus. And there's no shot of you getting on unless you want to try to spend that DP. And that's an option we don't see Vanguard's really spend. Yeah, at least it will hit the rising hit at right. times. Because it's just hot to freeze it. Armors through it. Converts back. It's a back roll there. Okay, they trade. What? Must have been that jump B, though. Yeah. Another hit for Lufal. Extended combo. Air reset. Guard cancel from Crazy Fingers. <laughs> yeah, the Armored Punch gets armored by that, and they trade. Jeez. However, another straight punch. Oh, drop In the corner. It, though. Yeah. DP. That could have been a finish right there for Crazy Fingers, but missing the mark. We're trying to go for another Lariat forward. Not finding it. Ooh. Good armor. Let's Wait. Oh, it hit anyway. It's a pillar. Going straight up. Heck yeah, Lufal. I feel it. Good round here for Lufal. That, yeah, that didn't look like it would hit, but then I was like, oh wait, hold on a second. It's DNF. They almost never miss. They're just whoosh. Well, I'm going to say almost never. Ranger has missed a couple times before I've seen that happen. Okay, here we go. <laughs> they trade. Okay, but Crazy Fingers fires back much quicker. This tends to be faster and closer. Another right. DP, though. Jab but challenges, yeah. The two way. Try to reset there. Do not fall for it. Nice. Well, they crash the ground here. Big damage. Yeah, not enough mana here to get the kill. I, I don't think. No shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Oh my goodness, a throw to finish it. It's about to be the most absurd thing I've seen. If you got a kill off of 25 mana being left. Well, you never know. Yeah, you know nice what? I guess this way. Okay, TV. Yeah. Beat. yeah. Smart. Calls out that overhead. <laughs> Converts in your face. Works. See what you're doing. Yeah. Great option there, Crazy Fingers, Blink. That big combo from Lufal. Right, here we go, Corpse run here for the corner. Oh, yes, Ooh. and we just go for throw. We catch you blocking the before on defense. Uh, this should be able to finish here. Lufal taking a round. Yeah, great option right there, right? Beats beats the die punch. I like that choice. And it has a ton of hits too, right? You can see any armor things coming out. Yes, indeed. Oh, the armor, oh. and we armor right back with conversion to save it. Lufal coming out on top. Yeah, Lufal's won a lot of those armor to armor interactions. Playing very good there in that situation. Jump. The block on the empty low. Over armored overhead. Puts Lufal in awakening. One mix up. Blocks it. Another one blocks it again. Yeah, we got the sway one more time. Still armored up. Lots Ooh. of scratch damage available, but Lufal has awakened. He can finish this out. I think they will right here. Yep. Very nice. And with that, Lufal goes up two to zero. The crazy biggest has been in this situation before being down zero to two, and it's come all the way back. Will we see that one more time? All right, going back to that third game. Potentially, Lufal looking at that loser's finals position. Nice, goes low there. What's the mix up? It's based the roll, but not the DP. Yeah, didn't even challenge the roll, just kind of sat there and looked at it. Took their turn a little too late. Armor. Yeah, they're still airborne. That is going to be a hit for Lufal. Puts it down. Double jump. Yeah. Ooh. That armored overhead. That's it. Getting the conversion as well. Should be finishing this out. Yes. Nice round. Okay. Good start for Crazy Fingers. It was like that in the last game, though. Now we need to try to close this out entirely to put a point on the board. Nice follow through here from Lufal. Okay. Trying to sway oh. out, but we got armor after. There it is. Once again, such a powerful tool, right? Once you get into the stance, it acts as such a powerful tool. Offense and defense at the same time. Good yes. block there. Blocks it again. Jump B. Goes overhead, blocks it again. Good back step. Scary. Converts out. Nice. Converts out as well. Armor. Oh, but the guard gauge a little tricky. Back roll. Nice Lariat. Converts. <laughs> Tries, Tries to, to go safe. We got the sweep. No, oh. the fans, but we still have the thrust. Okay. Match point for Lufal right here. If he wins this, he will be going on to lose his finals. Meanwhile, Crazy Fingers rules a home in fourth place. Ooh. Armor again. Armor again! 
You gotta go armor for armor. A for A. Here we go. Massive follow up here. Not quite into Awakening, which is a beautiful nice. spot to be if you're Lufal, but jumped in on. Reset is low! Yo, to be, we can. We have the meter. We do have the meter. I think we do. Ah, <laughs> tech out. But still got the closeout. Yeah, it worked out. That was, uh, that could have been rough. But you know what? It ended up being okay for now. Crazy thing is on the board. One point. Still a tall order here for Crazy Fingers, the way that Blue Bull has been playing right now. Okay, jeez. Oh, missed the follow-up. That's unfortunate. What's That's facing was just kind of weird to hit an extended limb. And what's crazy is that uh, Finger, Crazy Fingers is actually playing just outside the range of Vanguard. Going for those nice whip punishes with those lariats time and time again. Blue Fool is doing all they can to try to maintain that space because now that they have the max weight armor, you go for Lariat and eventually Lufal goes for armor and move and then goes for oh. right after. I think Lufal flinched right there, took some damage, but not yeah. too much. But look at that White House and then didn't get the reversal DP. Oh, but he challenges! That should be. Nah, nah. <laughs> Could have followed up. Could have followed up. There we are. The scrambles are working out in Crazy Fingers' favor right now. These big scrambles have just led to just like opportune interrupts for him. Exactly. Slow. Ooh. Ink drill. Last year. Armor. Oh. Yeah, that big armor. Lufo has done so well with this matchup with the armor. It's been crazy things just been punching his way through it at times. It's been exact. Tries to bait a throw. Guard cancels out. Ooh. Goes low again. Yeah, trying to go for IS there. Not going to work out. But the Awakening State is certainly going to help out with these bonuses on attack damage. This is mix up. It goes low. Overhead oh, gets nice. DP'd. Still alive. Right, but they punch. trade. But that trade works in Lufal's favor. Yo. Last two games, round a piece here. But this time around, it, it's even more on the line again because Lufal just needs that final round here to close it out against Crazy Fingers to advance to this loose final. Unable to clear the distance that gets anti-aired. Uh, tries for that, tries for some kind of sway move right there, but it gets beaten out. Like a jump. Air reset. Ooh, really trying to sway again. Right and this should, yeah, that should be it. Lufo with a very clean game, with a perfect KO. Lufo does take it in a very clean round. And really just punishing Crazy Fingers is like our sways right there. Yeah, absolutely. Just the, the conversation back and forth between these two players was Every single time they had that scratch damage applied, they were converting during armor boots because they knew both players were capable of doing those things, yeah. right? So you had those back sways opportunity, you convert, try to get the punish right after with the armor move of your own. Yeah, and like Lufu was just so masterful at using armor in general, right? Mm -hmm. I think almost armor interaction, they ended up having advantage because they're just so much better at converting at the right timing. Right. And it just worked out so well for Lufu. I mean, if they ended up losing that set, I would have been like, wow, even though his armor management was so good, ended up losing. But, you know, ultimately they did end up being the difference right there. Yes. All right. Well, with that being said, we have our losers finals locked in, and that does mean we have one and two more sets before we get to grand finals. But before that, we have a, few, a little bit of a break here. Let's go check those out, and we'll be back with more DNF Duel. We got more Combo Breaker 2024 ready to go. But before we do, let's take a short break. Understand that our no-shells pistachio ads upset you. And to show you how much we understand, we had these made. And you're gonna stop selling no-shells, right? <laughs> no, they're wildly popular. <laughs> what do we look like? Idiots! <laughs> if you guys haven't done so already, be sure to check out all of the new fighting game event merch coming out to celebrate Combo Breaker. We got new hoodies, bomber jackets, and plenty more if you guys check it out over at combobreaker.org forward slash shop.
Get ready to rumble at Combo Breaker with the Yeti. We're setting up our booth with our official Street Fighter merch that'll knock your socks off. Plus, don't miss out on our event exclusive releases. Meet us there for some epic gear that celebrates your fighting spirit or shop the collection online at theyeti.com slash combo breaker. There's a new challenger in Skullgirls. Play as Marie in Skullgirls Second Encore with the Season Pass on Steam, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or Xbox, as well as Skullgirls Mobile. Download it today to get Marie for free on the App Store. DNF Duel action. We're down to our last three competitors. This is our losers, finals, and after that, grand finals. Yes, indeed. It's been a strong showcase of DNF Duel so far. A nice little spread of the cast. I mean, we did get quite a bit of Vanguard, but I mean, other than that, we've had a fairly decent spread of the cast here. And up next, we will have that losers finals. Like you said, it'll be Monocat versus Luful. Luful on the Vanguard. And Monocat is going to be on the Inquisitor for this one here. Right. The first time they met, they actually met in Winterside. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Monocat was the one who came out on top there against yes. uh, Luful, but we'll see if there's a reversal of fortunes there. As yeah. Luful playing quite well right now. <laughs> yeah, Luful feeling very confident throughout this entire bracket, even during the match against Monocat here. So this run back will be very interesting to see who comes out on top after the fact here. So, yeah, the winner of this will go on to face GoldenEye, who has been playing yes. very, very well yes. as, as well. As so, to be expected from GoldenEye on uh, Ranger. Yeah. All right, here we go. I think that, you know, one of the main differences that you may see in this is that um, I do think that Lufo is much more warmed up at this point, I would say. Right. Um, and I think that, like, some of the changes that from the first match were that I think they had ended up losing a lot of challenges, like, at that very close to mid-range. But we might see something different this time around. Yeah, we're, we're trying to figure out ways that we can kind of get in that mid-range to win against the Vanguard, right? Because Vanguard has plenty of ways to push it right back out before that big damage starter can happen for Inquisitor. Uh, looking for a lot of the Holy File setups into Flames. But that first knockdown is going to be crucial for Monocast, which uh, I'm sure they know very well. Um, but opening Gambit will be the, the deciding factor. We already got the roll through a couple times here. Finding that max range, spacing it, you've already watched them back into a corner. It's just a nice spot for Lufu because now you don't have anywhere to escape oh. unless you try to roll and succeed on the punish. Good call out here with the pit. With the Wheel of Death, keep you locked up defense. So much guard damage down to only two bars of guard. That was actually a very nice low right there to open up. We thought we could stand here. Holding on. Ah, it's gonna get guard broken. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Had IS for their life right there to prevent the guard crush. However, ended up getting an even more untimely guard crush, and that's gonna be the round. Oh my gosh. Three wheels of death. Seal it out for uh, Monocap for that first round. Yeah, it's just that, like, in that specific punish, you get launched and that wheel gets set up with no extra right. conversion. So you get that extra, like, extra meter to do all those wheels. Oh, okay, nice. 
Use that jumping skill to beat whatever that Monikan attempted on the ground. Could have been a throw, could have been anything, honestly. Ooh, nice. Twist hard. Get for the fire. Yeah, the fire carp is certainly going to be helpful. The dive to bring it closer to the corner. And the file also exploding right on top of the additional damage here. And Monokat just like that patches up. But he's in awakening here. We can get our open. We can certainly spend for super. And this time we're not standing up at all. Monokat is just content with blocking low. But for oh. Alpha, that guard gauge was dwindling away. And Lupul knew they had to make a move. Otherwise, it was going to be guard broken. It was do or die. And it looks like Monokat will succeed for this first game in loser's final. My goodness. That is just, you know, masterful game plan executed, right? Just yes. really powerful block stream. And, you know, and so far it hasn't seemed like Loop wants to challenge any of these block streams in a yeah. traditional way. He's going to try to guard through them, right? You have to IS the normals because they do the most guard damage, but it's just so hard to do during this. Absolutely. Damage over time. Corner positioning again for Monokat. Like we said earlier, without a reversal to your name in, the, in terms of uh, Vanguard, beyond just that initial very upward DP, like, it's kind of tricky for the character to get out of these corner positions. Once we let that gap open, certainly we'll capitalize on it. Monokat is also going to return Ooh. favor there. Right, so, something got tagged. Yeah, there was that conversion, right? And then something right after it, but... Yeah, it looks like the wrong combo here. I'm not going to be able to kill because they don't have an awakening. Right. But it doesn't matter. Five of the series will start things off beautifully for Monokat in the second game. Yeah. Bit of a, bit of a scramble there. Whoa, but a big neutral hit here for Lufol. Just right outside the spacing. It's a big hit to start things off this round. Oh. I'm going to put them on awakening, though. Yes, indeed. It may not have been the play right here. Let's keep going. Be careful. Ooh. Nice guard cancel out. Monokat steal back the turn. We've lost enough health in this round. My yes, is certainly doing a lot of work yes. for Monokat here. But Lupul finding a way to interrupt to make the most of it. Yeah, perfect IS there against the last hit of that hit though. Makes it as unsafe as possible because that is a high level attack. Yeah. With that. Closes out that round. And getting on the board round wise. Took a look at the time, said, okay, it's time to win against Monokat. <laughs> exactly, because with that, it's an initial a great start right here. Yeah. Sets up the damage over time. And again, you know, as many times as you can. Okay, jump blender here. Just that frame kill. Yep. Get to that safe jump. Oh, and look at that. Max Raid recognizing the IS is in the works here. We're able to go for these fire carpets to at least look them away at the guard gauge, but the drill comes out for Lupul. Surprise that neutral. Yeah, surprise that guard, but very nice. Just the jump skill, but not able to pick it up. Oh, geez. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to jump out again, not going to work out. Was it run up? Ooh. Did fake the dive, but unfortunately he swung the wrong way. And with that, Monokat's going to take the round most likely. Yeah, that was a very good roll for Monokat right there. And unfortunate for Lupul. Almost read the situation entirely, but wasn't able to find the mark there. Right, and with that, quick 0 from Monokat. Look, wants to get that run back against Goldeneye. Right? Lupul just jumps right back in. That took a moment to think about that, at the very least. <laughs> Go more Ooh. IS very early spent. Yeah, it gets like light moves. IS can make your blocks and actually longer. But yeah. okay, gets a big armor hit here. But yeah, you want that white health anyway though, because that just can help you out in the long run. Right, right outside of awakening, very well played. Then the meter on block is here. No IS that guard gate, but ends up not mattering. I is awakening to get in, into. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, uses the conversion to get into awakening, and Ooh. with that, both players are now in awakening. Yep. Pinwheel has so much meter for more. This is part bit of fire. Another one. <laughs> in exhaustion currently. Have to kind of build away at that guard gauge. Just over halfway there. Yeah, I can only block a few more of these without IS. Another pinwheel, and they tried to do something because they knew they were not going to get out of this. Yep, you know, trying to find that conversion opportunity, and there's still not enough time there. Monocat is on set point for this loser's final. The speed run of a match that we see. I'm honestly probably the fastest that we've had on this top eight so far. I know. Because Monocat's just in there, you know? Right. And this, this character has so much damage to set up over time. Double cross on turn. <laughs> Did not quite work out, but has a carbon fire to continue the pressure. 
gonna be like a dot. So launcher and again so much health off the table. And we're just starting the chip game one more time. Nice DP. First one of the set there. Uh, oh no. Yeah, tried that air special and this will probably close it up. That is rad. Wake up and wheel one more time. What? Oh, oh okay. Wait, yeah, they're so not dead. They're, not trying, to they're trying to pop up. They're trying to pop off. They're trying to pop off. Oh no. No, no, no. Lupul about to close this one up. I forgot. Uh -oh. Lupul think. Uh oh. You're dead. Not you're... like, no. Just out of range. Oh. <laughs> don't even, don't, don't even, even do it. Yeah, you're not over. allowed anymore. Oh my not goodness. Not allowed. Your opportunity is gone. You know what? The, okay. You know, pop offs <laughs> also require a level execution. <laughs> right, as well, right, right. Gotta be prepared to know your combo is gonna kill. <laughs> You have to know with certainty. And here it goes, Goldeneye with the look of death. Look at the glisten. Well, well, well. <laughs> Thought you could pop off on my stage? Like, uh, me? That was so Do you know funny. who's on winner's side? Grand Finals of DNF Duel? It's me. And you're that trying to pop true. off? That like, is true, yeah. So, you know, Goldeneye walking up to the stage is now going to be in winner's side and so if this is literally the first fighting game tournament you've ever watched that means he has to be beaten twice to uh, for the uh, challenger to win the tournament that's certainly correct here if we could take a look at the run of this top eight in just a moment here we do have lufel up against moncat we just saw that run back happen and just like it did in the initial set that they had faced off against each other it ended the same way except almost an entire mistake but you look at GoldenEye's run here, you know, just excellent victories through the winner's side before Monica had to take it down to losers. So another run back, of course, certainly ending in favor for GoldenEye. This top eight run has been exceptional, but one victor will remain, and it's going to end almost the same way the winner's finals had started. Yeah, that's exactly true. A run back for Monica. I mean, if you're Monica right now, you didn't get your you didn't get your pop up executed properly, right? So right. that's got to be the incentive for this for this match. You got to right. win so you can pop off. Yeah, that, I mean that might be a little embarrassing if you don't get the opportunity to pop off and yet you had it locked in. Or was it only like a Lufel pop off? Like that was it a Lufel true, specific yeah. pop off? And then it's, it's like a all picture. Over. Yeah, it's like a picture of Lufel. Like, hey, this is you. <laughs> hey, you know we're but we're besties. You know, like, take a selfie together. But yeah, now it's relationship not work with anymore. Lufel ended. Now best friends with with his voice all right. right, players are setting up their characters. They do have the stage of victory selected, but victory for only one player here. As we get into this grand finals match, fist bump is in, no button check, it's gonna get hot. Here we go. Now, Golden, I often to play with no game sound, I just realized, which is, it's a choice, right? You don't right, necessarily right. need to hear. GoldenEye thrives off the energy. I don't know if you saw it earlier, like GoldenEye was enjoying what the crowd was doing, chanting with them the FGC chant before the Street Fighter VI top eight it started on main stage golden is here for the whole ambiance of the fgc experience here we go opposing them will be moncat looking for that run back and we'll see if they have it in them for a game or two but we did see you know moncat had a couple of really dominant rounds at times right right some really critical decisions got out of those block rings, but we'll see how that plays out here can you close the gap against Ranger? And can you find those opportunities to make your uh, escape out of those corner situations? Because time and time again, Goldeneye was in complete control, standing at the mid range. He looked for a couple of gun hawks. And of course, the setups here with the. See, that was actually gun hawk right there, but blew up because of the head strike. Nice. Crumple stage and beautiful positioning for Goldeneye to put Monocat right in the corner. Awakening is Monica, but kind of stuck here dealing with these blocks. It has to IS as many as he can, but every hit has to be IS individually. Gets oh. guard broken, and that's a perfect. <laughs> Even gold eye feel of that one here with the quick pistol whip for the victory. All right, full screen scenario. Doesn't need to worry about playing carpet here. Yeah, I guess a lot yeah. Not to extend the combo here, grenade, and pull up and allow at least Mono to set combo as well. The drop right there. Ooh. Was a real block. If you want to see the guard cancel there, just like that, right? Gets out yep. of the corner. Nice little roll here. As the low meter does golden eye. Converge, gets a hit. And we've seen the situation exactly like this. Go for the pinwheel, gonna get as much as that puck because Goldeneye can't guard cancel until now. Now he's able to guard cancel, but he's gonna lose so much guard gauge in this situation. Carpet fire, another oh, no, pinwheel. No, 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 wait! The guard gauge! 
Almost gone. Ah, uh, DP's out. Are you out. kidding me? Don't convert. Oh, he converted it anyway. And that doesn't need all that help after all. But yeah, just a really good situation to finally ride it out, right? If his meter had just been a tiny bit less, that would have been a guaranteed guard crush. But with that, able to get out of there. I was trying to read what GoldenEye was saying. It was either I knew that I wouldn't get guard broken. I knew that I was going to survive. I think that's what GoldenEye said. Must have been, right? Because it worked out perfectly. With that, another opening. Big opener for GoldenEye. Back down. Nice explosion. Lift off. Ward is going to set up the main here after a couple scud genocide. Of course, of course, the classic. Time to get a scan. How do you get out of this corner as Quister? Will you have the version available? The roll is great yeah. option, but of course, the crumple stay. Yeah, yeah, I tried to roll through that, but that that jump over move causes crumple because it is going to be a guaranteed turn in that right, situation. Right. So he does beat it out with that good reach from Goldeneye. Goldeneye just has to cast a number. Like, every interaction has just been, I know exactly what you're going to do to get out. You go for the jump shot arc. The moment that you think that Mana Cat is going to roll through it, Mana can't help but roll. Maybe it's just left on purpose there at that point, but either way. Oh my goodness, another oh, counter hit. That was shot. It's going to be very close health because there's going to be so much chip damage going up here. No. Stagger pressure. Yeah. Oh, two, and there we go. Okay. We got our hit. Got that conversion on deck as well. And I don't think this is death, no, but it not. is a lot of damage. Going for pinwheels, guard cancels out, just like that. As we mentioned before, it's a situation where you have a 100 meters, that pinwheel setup is not guaranteed. Right. Look out here, and guard break on the bird. Oh. Yeah, guard break is knocking at the door. Oh, Max yeah. the range, and a nice little back step. Two games, and Cole says, nope. Yeah. No chance. Very well played with that really immaculate space. Yeah, and that's so critical. Uh, uh, GoldenEye in this situation here because we've been at those max range scenarios and it opens up opportunities to make a quick gunshot there whether it be 5B or even uh, 5A like those are both great options to kind of uh, contest against the opponent. Okay. Or take that back. Yeah, good guard cancel. I like it because you know you're guaranteed at least a little bit of pressure. Right. right. Unfortunately, it's tight to hit again. Break dance, bring it down, launch it from corner. Okay, to roll out, grenade. It's kind of locked down there. Okay, guard nice. cancel again. Oh, it's just a range. Nice Ooh. conversion. Gets the hit. Build back some meter with this. Nice damage over time as well. Okay, run up. Bait the DP. Ooh. That's what you need. Finally bait the DP out. And with that, he's going to get on the board with this extended combo here. Yeah. And if you want to... Uh, we saw the player cam here. Hold on. I said, don't worry about it. It's just a little bit of a self pep talk that okay, like I need to keep going throughout the set. Like maybe I did drop that, but that's all right. We still have another round on the board available here. Ooh. Keep it to monitor potentially for Goldeneye there. Another combo same as we've seen before. Gonna set up next game. Good block screen. The hawk grenade set up here. The birds. Scary stuff. Uh, seen through the frames here, not going to succeed. Goldeneye still looking very healthy. Oh, tried to no. guard cancel that, but too high. Much too high. Good follow. Wait, 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 wait. It's not over. 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 Get back in there. It's first to three. He's sticking about it. First to two. What is it? Three, four? With three, what? Ah, uh, that cross the trumple. But I understand, like, you know, Goldeneye just plays so dominating that, like, it feels like Monica has to play, even though they won that round. Right. All right, guard cancel again. Grenades break your face. Gun Hawk is really chipping away at this guard gauge. Yeah, this guard gauge is so oh, low no. right now. And it's yeah. going to be a guard for soon. Oh, but he gets oh, out of no. it. Converts. Yeah, had to. But also look at all that work that you did for Goldeneye. And that's the thing. Goldeneye has not 100 meters. He's got to deal. He's got to hold all of it. There goes all the help. And with that, tries something and gets killed. And that's why you got to play the game, you know? <laughs> you can take a game just like that. Yeah, I mean, my goodness. I asked the whole way through, and then those final moments was not able to get enough meter back. I think maybe we attempted to go for conversion right there, just try to at least beef up what meter we had left, and then try to go for that guard cancel. Ooh, but it was not nice, there. meaty. Meaty's with a potentially risky move, but catch right. might do something. And that works out because with that gem cancel, we can get a full conversion. Dude. Oh, baits the guard cancel! Mondacat! 
has more than take after all. Absolutely. Max height here. Full extension. With 20 meter left. Are you kidding me? That dot damage just adds up so quickly, no and with that way. two openings, yeah. able to close it out. Very good stop here. There might be a momentum shift right here. And notice, Monocat took the headphones off. Ooh, maybe that's yeah, what it takes, that right? was it. Now they're locked in. You gotta get the energy from the crowd to help you succeed. There we go. Pressure from GoldenEye. Monocat respecting it. Jumping pinwheel converts it. No meter available for Goldeneye Ooh, here. Risky, but risky. Get out of the corner with a nice little interrupt. Yeah, that was a risky block, Shingender. Grenade setup. Save, you think the gun drop here? Another one? No, yes, he does use another one. Handles the guard crush. Ooh. Gets IS, gets out of it, yeah. but however, gets tagged on that roll. There's a 2A Golden Eye. So Once close again. right there. Set point. Tournament point. True. True. Spin too far away Ooh. for the nice pistol whip there, but. Does some crumple one more time for corner carry. Brilliant position after this cut genocide from me. Uh, and a throw mixing it up now. And the grenade hits. Extending the combo. Yes, indeed. And it has 100 meters, so this can be a nice spend as we reset for one final touch scenario. Goldeneye looking to close it out. Monocat has to the best for their tournament life here and now. Guard nice Neo converts. <laughs> out of there. If they can just catch. Ugh, did it punish? All right, but he's got that corner position. Good stuff here for Monocat. Flame Carpet does go. have the Wheel of Doom. Doesn't have 100 meter like last time. Gonna get guard crushed here. Let's take the highest through it. They do. Oh, God, that's the it. Uh, Wait, Monocat's the one who tp and won. He, yo, Golden, I thought they won because they tried to DP through it. But the final hit of wheel was still there. You were still smothered by the trade. Did not succeed in your favor. Like, what did we say at the start of this tournament? Anything could happen, anything. right? Anything. Literally DNF anything duel. could happen. DNF duel is happening. Two all in the set. And Goldeneye was certain they had won. They're so certain they were about to follow up. Wait, quit your way. Good guard cancel. We like that top of the screen guard cancel, but DP from Goldeneye. Okay, a lot of guard damage on Monica's side already. Okay, catches that back dash with that conversion. Gonna be another big combo. Nice pick up here. Can I hold you get psyched yourself out of the map? Because now it's looking like Monica is certainly in control until this corner set up here. And oh, okay. you know, I think that's a big call, right? That every time the, you've run out of mana, that's been an opportunity for Monica to attempt that card break and make it really eradicated in a way because of all the resources oh. available. This time around, though, there's a round. Yeah, I didn't expect that explosion right there, Monica. Once again, Goldeneye on tournament point. And with the slide. slide round start, my god. They called it out. Extended the grave, but it messed up the spacing a little bit. IS is a little bit here, but one another hit for Goldeneye. He's gonna be able to set up another grenade and be in a really good position to potentially go for Dr. Show Christopher. Right. Rolls out of the corner. Risky here, jumping normal. But back to full screen goes Goldeneye. Yeah, just single touch. And Goldeneye with full meter. Out of sight of the range of the gun hawk, but the slow uh, does hit. As long as we finish the combo, Goldeneye nodding, thinking they have succeeded. And they certainly have this time. Kapow, says Goldeneye. Goldeneye is your DNF dual champion of Combo Breaker 2024 in an unexpectedly suddenly very close match. <laughs> it was a headset. Yeah. All you gotta do is take the headset off for a moment, feel the energy of the crowd, and Goldeneye almost letting victory slip through their fingers because, yeah, Monocat was really mounting up an offense against Goldeneye, finding ways out. And honestly, I think the big pull, like you called out several Ooh. times, the fact of the matter was, we had so much meter spend that Monocat was able to make a reversal out, convert through, and basically guard break Goldeneye, almost guaranteed every single time. And that was looking like the solution here. And in this final game, it turned into a set where Goldeneye did not overspend. They always made sure they had 100 meter available in their pocket after their block stream was done, after they got Monocat in the corner. And I think making sure that we had resources for Ranger to succeed in those corner interactions, that's what got GoldenEye the victory today. Yeah, really great stuff for GoldenEye.
Mm -hmm. They had had such a great run right now. They yeah. seem so dominating. And honestly, it was so good for Monocat to really start showing some of those defensive options and kind of yeah. get you through it, right? Showing a lot of tenacity, you know, using the abdominal spirit to get through those guard crush setups, not just go down without swinging, right? Found some places to like sneak out, challenge, just spend conversion to like get in position to, you know, be in position to win those rounds at all, right? Yeah, it, it was so critical to make sure, like resource management in this game is absolutely critical now than ever with the different defensive opportunities they have to get out of corner situations to, you know, save on your guard gauge because that was always like that big crux of the situation, right? Um, you know, a lot of times Rangers would toss out Gunhawk. We've seen it time and time before where it'd be Gunhawk, all right, well, we're going to see a guard break here. Indomitable Spirit changes that. And it's certainly a surprise, no surprise to see GoldenEye in the winner's position here. We'll take a look at that top eight run, of course. Like I said, GoldenEye starting off winner's side, going through crazy fingers and back-to-back -back runs with Monocat, which has been substantial. Uh, but of course, Monocat had quite the run, not only from winner's side taking out Lufel, but going right back down to the loser's side and finishing the run back against Lufel. So the double jeopardy went back to back here for those that were in the top four, which I'd say that's pretty good positioning for this top eight right yeah. now. All the winners ended up being the double jeopardy victory for themselves. Outside on losers though, Riazu and Aku Dynasty, let's not forget them with Crank, Gang, God, and Danny Phantom with a strong showing as well throughout this top eight. Yeah, really good representation for a lot of different characters as well. Like, every one of the top four characters was a different character, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that a lot of these players showed a lot of spirit as well. Like, there were so many games that basically could come down to one hit at any point. Uh, there were some really critical drops that could have yeah. led to some heart-stopping moments, but, you know, it was a really exciting tournament, and I was really proud to be a part of it. You might say that some had shown quite a bit of indomitable spirit. <laughs> like, a lot of that. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's just, you know, just that's the nature of this game. It's so, like, fun to watch at times. Literally anything have as we just said right yeah. it's yeah. a bit unpredictable and that's kind of the joy that it brings everyone to right, watch, right right that volatility of this game is what gives it so much of its charm like at any given moment we, we could see the complete turnaround like we saw earlier with the final pixel of health available to a full health bar kill that was an insane set uh and even that moment where <laughs> where you thought you won and you literally went to go pop off that match almost did not go in your favor there oh my goodness uh, but we will be set up with our award ceremony here in just a moment. It looks like we do have a full top eight lineup here. Make sure all the players are gathered. We've got their medals available here. We'll take you over there in just a moment. But yeah, everyone that tuned in, thank you so very much. And we'll get right to that award ceremony right now. Yes. All right, and so standing up there, there they are. That is, I believe, Crank Gang God, as yes. well as Aqua Dynasty coming in at seventh place. Yeah. Very good showing for Crank and God. Very proud of him. I know I watched his top 16 match. He popped off so hard, but he yes. finally made it in the top eight. Very proud of him. You know, very showing his emotion on his sleeves. Aqua Dynasty, good showing, right? Um, had eventually like made it all the way, crawled all the way up here after losing that Inquisitor Mirror and Riazo. Done quite well with that Enchanter. So Enchanters, much fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was um, very surprised to see that one. Really close match against Crazy Fingers, but you know, Crazy Fingers ended up being just going completely crazy and winning it. <laughs> yeah. Of oh, course, man. Danny Phantom yes. uh, fought really hard fought <laughs> Vanguard Mirrors all the way through the bracket. Yeah. Nothing but Vanguard Mirrors for Danny Phantom, but ended up winning some of them. Uh, and Crazy Fingers, of course. The lone monk in this bracket, which is yeah. very surprising considering the state of uh, DDF Duel right now. Uh, thinking that the uh, monk was a very strong showing here. And there's Lufel here. I mean, wh what do the cards mean? Oh, or wait, yeah, he's going to reveal now. Your card was hard of <laughs> Ace of Hearts. Ace what? That wasn't even true. Anyways, Monocat up here in second place. Yeah, Monocat, wonderful showing. You know, had us on the edge of our seats. We yeah. always thought Monica had a chance no matter what. But with that being said, Goldeneye, with such a dominant showing, getting first place in DNF2 at Comberg 2024. Just looked dominating throughout. Only Monocat really present a real challenge to them, but once again, Cardi, congratulations. That big Combo Breaker trophy, yes. show it to the crowd. Congratulations to GoldenEye and all the DNF competitors. Yeah, look at that. I mean, what a way to celebrate this game in particular. Uh, still one more character on the way. Ned Master is coming soon here. I believe mid-January was the date, right? Something like that. Uh, so one more character still on the way to round out the cast for the season pass of DNF Duel, but a spectacular showing here. And I'm sure still many more to come for those that are participating in the game. Please definitely check it out. It goes on sale quite often and is a phenomenal game to check out. I mean, the explosivity is a ton of fun. 
uh, the accessibility to be able to go for some of these nasty combos is so much fun. So if you're a lap fiend, there's definitely a lot of things to look forward to in this game. Yeah, and it's a really fun game just to play with your friends too, right? You can go in and like, literally sauce your friends to death, yes. right? Like you're gonna find your like 200 meter combo and that'll be it, right? Absolutely, and with that being said, that will be wrapping it up here for us. Shay, it's been a real pleasure hanging out Absolutely, with you. Absolutely, as yes. always. And good seeing you guys as well at home at Calm Breaker, or maybe watching from the hotel room, you never right. know. But Calm Breaker is going to keep going on. We've got other streams still live right now. We yes. still have got Team Spooky as well as other streams going uh, with Street Fighter Six and Tekken 8 coming up. So yes. don't go anywhere. Watch some more Combo Breaker. Yes.